North Dakota State is the three-time defending national champions with 20 consecutive victories inside the Fargo Dome, including six in a row against South Dakota State. But today, the Jackrabbits hope to bring an end to the Bison reign. Next on ESPN3. The NCAA FCS Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual, part of Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. We welcome you to the Fargo Dome in Fargo, North Dakota, the Bison of North Dakota State against South Dakota State in this second round FCS playoff. A look at our bracket, the winner of this one faces the winner of Coastal Carolina and Richmond. You see Coastal Carolina currently in the lead in that game over Richmond. Alongside Pat Hill, I'm Wayne Randazzo and coach North Dakota State, South Dakota State, two great rivals matching up in the postseason. It's a big one. They've been playing a long time, but the last six times out, the Bison have had the upper hand, and they have won three straight national championships. If the Jackrabbits are to get it done today, senior Zach Zenner has to be the reason why. He's the man. He's a pre-med major, and he's 114 yards short of reaching 2,000 yards rushing three years in a row. Last week against Montana State, he got to the second level and was the big reason that they're back here today in the second round of the playoffs. Zenner in the snow last week against Montana State, but he has struggled against North Dakota State in his career. Well, he's had 31 games that he's out of 40 that he's hit 100 yards rushing. Never, though, against the Bison of North Dakota State. So what's the reason? What causes Zenner to struggle against this team? Well, first of all, North Dakota State plays great defense. They call it the cup. They turn everything back inside of their pursuit. And if they can make him stop his feet and change direction before he hits the line of scrimmage, it's going to be tough for Zach Zenner. But if the offensive line holds up and gets him to the second level, then South Dakota State and the Jackrabbits have a great chance today. It's going to be a fun one in Fargo coming up next. See the series history between these two teams dates all the way back to 1903. South Dakota hasn't won since 2009. The Jackrabbits beating North Dakota State then 28-13. It's been all North Dakota State in the last six meetings. This is the second time they have met in the playoffs. As we take a look at John Stiegelmeyer, the longtime head coach for South Dakota State, in his 18th season, so much success he's had with this program. He's done a great job, and his message to the team is win the play. One play at a time, and the scoreboard will take care of itself. North Dakota State with Chris Kleiman as their head coach in his first season. The former defensive coordinator here getting the head coaching job when Craig Bull went to Wyoming. They haven't missed a beat. His message is execution, ball security on offense, takeaways on defense, and the Bison will move on. Three straight FCS championships for this Bison team. Just incredible what they have done over the last few seasons. Undefeated last year, 11-1 this year. And this place ready to rock for the playoffs. Boy, a lot of electricity in here. I've heard a lot about Fargo. I've been coaching for 40 years, and this atmosphere is electric. These fans get into it. The parking lots were full today. I've been looking forward to doing this game, and I think we're going to have a great one here today. Ben LeCompte will kick it off for North Dakota State. Brady Mangarelli and Trevor Wesley wait back deep for the Jackrabbits. Uh, here we go. Two old rivals. We'll see what happens. And round two of the FCS playoffs underway in Fargo. It's Mangarelli who will sit on it in the end zone. And South Dakota State will start from their own 25. Well, I'm going to tell you what. They better have some answers for number 53. He's been a special player. Kyle Emanuel, last time out against these guys, had four sacks, four and a half tackles for losses, and ten tackles. They better have some answers for number 53. Austin Sumner will try to avoid Kyle Emanuel today. Sumner missed seven games due to injury earlier in the season. Back out there, though, in the second half of the year as Sumner got hurt in the first quarter against Missouri. 249 yards, two touchdowns in the win last week over Montana State. Well, yeah, he's the ace in the hole because that was his first game back. He's been playing now. He should be a lot better this time around. That center out in motion as an empty backfield starts it for the Jackrabbits. Sumner under pressure right away. Had to get rid of it. And guess who? Kyle Emanuel barreling down on Sumner. Kyle Emanuel right off the bat. Speed rush on the outside. And shaken up on the play was the right tackle, but he went right around Bryce Silverman on an outside speed rush. 
Emmanuel had more sacks this season than the entire Jack Rabbits team. He's a finalist for the Buck Buchanan Award. He's a special player. And you talk about a motor, he goes all day long. Second down and 10. Lauscher, the fullback in motion. And Zach Center with his first carry, trying to break through that line. Gets a couple. It'll be third down and eight, and they tangway there for the tackle. Once again, right there, there was the pursuit from the inside out. Hits him for a one yard gain. They have got a block on the first level. They got to get Zach Center to the second level. You can see now they're going to nickel coverage. They're a little bit worried about the matchups at the corners against the big receivers from South Dakota State. Third down. This place is loud, coach. Very loud. Sumner to pass, needs eight, and finds it over the middle of the field to one of those big receivers, the freshman, Jake Winicky. Good job of protection there. They had a five-man blitz, picked it up. Five-man pressure. Once again, Emmanuel gets clean on the outside, but he gets the ball off first down. Jake Winicky, the redshirt freshman, a finalist for the Jerry Rice Award for the best FCS freshman in the country. With the pistol on first and ten. And the give to Zach Zenner. He had some room in front. And Zenner fighting through that left side gains four. He got four. But there again, he, they get him to the second level. But you can see the pursuit from the inside out once again. They cone it back to the inside. Hard pursuit by North Dakota State. You can see here they get him clean to the second level, but watch the pursuit from the inside. Right there. We got him. They got to be able to wall off linebackers. They got to be able to wall people off and get him clean. And a pass on second down. Trevor Wesley along the sideline gets knocked out of bounds near midfield. Looks like he has the first down. Needed the 49. And that's right where they will mark him a first down for the Jackrabbits. Good play action, holding the charge, the pass rush of the defensive line. Little play action, screen to the perimeter, just like running a sweep. South Dakota State moving the football, two first downs on this opening drive. That's something you see against the Bison defense, the top scoring defense in the country. Four receivers in the gun, first down, they swing it out to Zenner. Zenner gets through the first defender and a couple more before he gets into Bison territory to the 48, a gain of three. Yeah, once again, you know, North Dakota State, watch the pursuit from the inside. What we call the cup right now, the play's getting forced back inside, but the inside pursuit, there it is, Emmanuel from the inside, the running of the defense, the defense running to the football takes away a possibility of a big play. Now second and seven. All three receivers on the wide side. Now Schneider in motion will stay there. But protection as Sumner finds Schneider. Had to reach behind him to make the catch. And bowled over after a gain of just one. Looked like Carlton Littlejohn who had the tackle. Third and long. And it's a situation where it's third and six. They're going to nickel defense. What we mean by nickel defense, they take out a linebacker, put an extra corner in the game. They'll move number five, champion, to the nickel back, and they'll bring in number 24, Trey Dempsey, and they'll try to match number six, their top corner, C.J. Smith, up with Jake Winicky. Blitz comes on third down. Sumner gets rid of it over the middle of the field. It's incomplete. Connor Landberg, the intended receiver, almost collided with the umpire there. Yeah, the umpire, he's got to move up. When the ball, when he sees protection, he's got to move up. He's right there in the way of the under route. That umpire is going to get moving. You'll see it here. Good job of pass protection. They do a good job on the twist. And the umpire is right in the way. Number 18 has to slow down. Umpire makes a good play. Helping the North Dakota State defense there. Would have been close to the first down had Lambert been able to make that catch. Right. Ethan Sawyer to punt. And it's Dudzik back deep making the fair catch at the 15-yard line. So we'll see North Dakota State's offense for the first time. And coach, 
Another team that likes to run the football. Chris Kleiman will use John Crockett. He'll use King Frazier. And Carson Wentz can even run the quarterback. Well, they run the ball very, very successfully. They're a traditional power running football team. The thing that makes them really go is the quarterback has added a new dimension to the game with his running skills. He went for over 100 yards last time out against South Dakota State. And the coaches from South Dakota State said the quarterback has added a new dimension to their game. 120 yards two weeks ago against Youngstown State. Eisen ran for 353 in that game. though on first down a lot of time for Wentz goes the short route over the middle of the field to the tight end Vaudlin and Vaudlin gets out to the 22 game of about seven yeah very rarely do you see just straight drop back pass but that was straight drop back just hitting the Y just a little hook up over the ball these fans know their football coach when the defense is on the field they're get loud. real loud when the offense very quiet the great fans these are great fans here and they love the bison Orlock goes in motion on second and short. Will be the lead blocker for John Crockett. His first carry of the game, a big one. The umpire in the way again. Boy, he's it's rolled a, over. He's having a tough day, isn't he? Crockett Woo! to the 38. A first down. That's the second time the umpire's gotten in the way. This time Crockett just knocked him down. Their signature play. They're running power. They're blocking down on the right side, pulling the left guard up on the backer, and Crockett, the hit made by the umpire. It's Rob Kinter, the umpire. Now Crockett again on first down. Can't get through the first line of defense this time. Jesse Bobbitt was the first to hit him. It'll be second and nine. Uh, there you see great defense right there by South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits, they play good defense themselves. They caused Crockett to bounce a little bit outside. The first run, Crockett had a straight line at the line of scrimmage, straight through to the secondary. This time they make him hiccup outside and defense pursuit. Knocks him down for about a one yard gain. Carson Wentz, fifth in Bison history in yardage, sixth in completions, third in touchdowns. You mentioned the junior starting to run the ball as well this year. Out of the eye on second down. Play action. And Wentz going to throw it deep down the sideline with a catch made along the sideline for a first down. Wow. Trevor Gebhardt. That was a bullet. This ball is a bullet right on the money. Nice throw. Carson Wentz, what a throw. That's a big time hose right there now. The 31 of the Jackrabbits, first down for North Dakota State. Gebhardt, just his 15th catch of the season. Eight of 29 to set up. There's first down in South Dakota State Territory. Back to the run. Crockett up the middle. Bobbitt hit him at the 28. Drag of the 27. Gain of four. It'll be second and six. Now, when I say they're running power, what power is, we call it power O. They're blocking down on the play side, pulling the offside guard up into the hole, fullback kicking out, and away they go. That is their bread and butter play, and play action is coming off of it. Crockett had a nice game earlier this year against South Dakota State, including two second half touchdowns. That was a game where the Jackrabbits had the lead at halftime before the Bison pulled away late. Yeah, that, that, that game, uh, the Bison came out in the second half, just controlled it. Empty backfield for Wentz on second down, four man rush. Wentz looking for the end zone. Herzintowski has it. Touchdown. This crowd knows how to yell when it's offense scores. Woo. What a throw again and great protection. Watch the protection here by the offensive line. They pick up the twist, double TE twist. Tackles outside, ends inside. Pick it up well, five on four. Great job of protection. Nice throw, nice catch. Touchdown, Bison. Third touchdown catch for the true freshman, R.J. Erzendowski. Out of Omaha, Creighton Prep. And Carson Wentz, number 20 on the season. And North Dakota State on the board first. Quite a drive to start things off for the Bison. Erzendowski, only a freshman. Only a freshman. They've got a lot of players coming back. And they had to replace a lot of players. Adam Keller on the point after. And North Dakota State with an early lead. Six plays, 85 yards on their opening drive. Carson Wentz to the true freshman. R.J. Erzendowski for the score. Well executed.
North Dakota State with the lead 7-0 over South Dakota State. Let's take a look at how South Dakota State and North Dakota State plan for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And Coach, the Jackrabbits want to get it done one play at a time. Yeah, one play at a time. Win every play, but most importantly, Coach talked a lot about winning for the seniors. And on the Bison side of the ball, it's on defense. Create opportunities. And, and so far, they've done that. They got to force punts. They got to get turnovers. Turn it over to the offense. Let them control the game. The offense running an 85 play drive, 85 yard drive, rather, six plays. And an early start for the Bison. This is a wobbly kick that goes out of bounds. So a mistake by the Compt on the kickoff will help South Dakota State get some field position. Yeah, that's uh, he's had five of those now six on the year. He's a strong kickoff player, but you cannot kick him out of bounds in a game like this. That'll be the ball. We kick out of bounds on a kicking team. South Dakota State has elected to take the ball first and ten at the 35 yard line. Today's officials are from the Colonial Athletic Association. Charles Lambertina, the referee. Who's the umpire? That guy's got two great hits today. Rob Ginter's the umpire. Yeah. <laughs> You know, in the first meeting, the big difference in the game in time possession, 38 minutes for the Bison and only 21 minutes for the Jackrabbits. And so far, if that trend continues, I don't see the Jackrabbits being able to get it done. They've got to control the football. They've got to score points. And Zach Zenner with it here on first there down, breaking is. free. Zenner to the midfield, a gain of 15. Now, when you look at a play like that, you see Zenner there. He hits the line of scrimmage. He gets the second level. That's what they have to do. A good job of blocking right there. A little hold on the backside. If you look at the right tackle there, the backside tackle had a little grip there, which caused that play to get through. Our umpire, Kinter, has been hit a little bit too much today. Missed that play. 21 yards for Zenner on the march to 2,000 for the season. Needed 114 for the day entering today's play. Play action on first down and a incomplete pass. Looking for Schneider over the middle of the field. Pretty clear that Schneider was held from behind. So that'll be a call against Christian Dudzik of the Bison. Yep. Pass interference. Defense, number 35. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Well, we got a lot of booing now, but they missed the hold on the big run, and they got the hold on the pass. So uh, it all balances out in the end. This is the kind of drive that the Jackrabbits have to have, though. They gotta put points on the board, though. Looking to answer quickly after North, North Dakota State score. From the Bison 40, it's first down. Zach Zenner with a cut back to the middle, a gain of three to the 37. Tangway in there on the tackle, along with Grant Morgan. It'll be second down here for the Jackrabbits. Well, formationally, watching a lot of film the last two days here, that's a new formation. I didn't see much of that trip to the open side. Um, getting that outside linebacker to play out on the on the three by man on the three man side, giving a little bit of running room there to Zach on the weak side of the formation. Sumner looking to pass on second down. The slant is too high for Winicky. Nice job by Winnicky to stay with that play, make sure it was knocked to the ground after CJ Smith got his hands on it. When we say too high, Winnicky's six foot four, so it's way too high. And uh, they've made a little switch at left tackle. When I watched the first game, their starting left tackle, Bryce Silvering, had a lot of trouble with number 53. When they brought Nick Carl Card into the game at six foot eight, 310, he did a lot better job neutralizing Emmanuel the right end of the Bison. So we'll see how that matchup continues to go in this game. Let's coming on third down. Sumner to the middle again, too wide of his intended target. Schneider had to reach out just to make sure it wasn't intercepted. DeLuca on the coverage will be fourth and seven. That's, that's good coverage there. Good coverage. They're doing a lot of play action pass to slow down the pass rush. Now fourth down, this is a big play. South Dakota State, no, they're going to punt it. They're going to punt it. The offense was on the field for a moment, got the crop riled up, got you riled up. Yeah, I was thinking they were going to go. And Coach Stieg, he'll, he'll give you something a little later to chew on, but not yet. Not. All right, this might be a fake here. This is a good place for a fake. And it looks like North Dakota State is playing pretty soft. There, yeah. Well, got a little jump there. 
Well, if it was a fake, it was given Both away. Start on the offense, number 32. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. Kyle Paris running into open space before the snap. So now fourth and 12, and then he sort of a fake. It's less likely here. I, I don't think that penalty really hurts him because now I think your your punter has a better chance to sting it. What I mean by that is hang it up around the 10 yard line a lot easier from here than having it go into the end zone. Christian Dudzik standing back at his own nine. Sawyer averaging just under 40 yards per punt on his net this season. Spiraling kick. Dudzik calls for a fair catch. It bounces over his head and right by the Jackrabbits into the end zone. That was a big miss by Thayer Trenhill, who was standing right at the goal line. It's uh, we'll Bison talk. Ball when yeah. we come back. The NCAA FCS Football Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Second round matchup here today at the Fargo Dome, and it's 7-0. North Dakota State with the lead over South Dakota State, middle of this first quarter. The Bison coming off a six-play, 85-yard drive, getting the football back with their second possession. South Dakota State's gotten it into Bison territory a couple of times, Twice. but both times they've stalled. And they, and they really blundered on a special teams play on a fair catch. You always got to get behind the returner. That should have been placed down inside the five yard line, but it said it's on the 20. And they have to make a stop early in this game already. He's checking here. Crockett, the lone setback. He'll get the ball, trying to get around that left side, but he's eaten up. Good job by TJ Lolly to finish the tackle. Shane Gottlob was the first to get there. TJ Lolly is a heck of a football player. Second team all. Uh, Missouri Valley Conference had 20 tackles against North Dakota State last time out made a great play there from the inside out Both these teams are very well coached football teams But very rare blunder that uh, punt which was a difference in 15 yards of field position. Yeah, they were there They just didn't see it, the ball whizzed right by them. Yeah, they got to turn back Jack Rabbits waiting to see who had the ball there it was Wentz and he's sucked up in the backfield losing ER to be third and 11 a good job again by the front line of the Jack Rabbits. Yeah, they're doing a very good job. there, stopping the quarterback and the coaches said the coach said they needed to make that play on the quarterback runs and there they are right there. Great penetration from the outside. Jack Sherlock with the first hit J.R. Floaty was there to finish the play. Now third and 11, North Dakota State very good on third down at 48% on the season. Big play here early in this game. South Dakota State's got to get off the field. Playing cover two, keeping everything in front of them. Wentz has a lot of time, fires in the middle, and it's a first down completion. Trevor Gebhardt with his second catch of the day, a gain of 13. Outstanding job by the offensive line. Got in here Thursday, got to spend some time with the offensive line coach, Coach Riley, and they are doing a great job here blocking. This quarterback has all time. They're playing cover two, making it tough. You can't give a quarterback that much time in today's football. Gebhardt, two catches for 43 yards so far. Back to the running game, back to John Crockett. Right up the middle of the field, he gets about four. Actually, that's King Frazier with his first carry of the day. So Frazier getting some action, the transfer from Nebraska. That offensive line going back to them from North Dakota State, only one returning starter from last year's national championship team. That's Joe Haig at left tackle, who was first team all conference. The center, Jesse Hines, also first team all conference. But that offensive line, only one senior in it. They'll all be back except for Jesse Hines next year. So the number on Frazier's for the season, five and a half yards per carry. Second and five here. Play action. Wentz looking to go deep down the center, too far. Looking for Kerry Woods over the middle of the field. That one just sailed. It'll be third down. Wentz was a little shaken up on that play. Yeah, he got hit there. They run power pass. They fake the power run play. Power pass, and he takes a good hit here late by number 91 of the Jackrabbits. That's Plody. J.R. Plody. Seemed to pull up a little bit as he was sitting up, but still got him in a good spot. Now third down and five. 
We've seen the Bison convert already on a third and long on this drive. Jack Rabbit showing pressure, backing off. They rush four. Wentz throws, and it's knocked away. Good defense there. Once no again, flag. once again, the protection was excellent. Coach Riley does a super job with that offensive line. Watch him. Watch here. Playing a little bit of zone. Really good play there by number 22, Uriah Butler. Has six pass breakups this year, two interceptions, 31 tackles. Very good play by Jerron. On the first punt from the Bison, it comes off the foot of Ben LeCompte. Butler with the fair catch at the 13. And coach for South Dakota State, the only goal there was to make sure the Bison didn't score, and they did that. They did that, and they had a great punt, winning field position. And now they get the ball when we come back. Seven nothing North Dakota State with the lead over South Dakota State in the second round matchup of the FCS championship Coastal Carolina winning big over Richmond 36 to 8 so if the Chanticleers hang on presumably they will they will be the opponent of the winner of this game next week in the quarterfinals Well we're into a field position game uh, the punter for North Dakota State won the field position battle there with his punt and their punting unit now it's important for North Dakota State to hold them down here and get great field position after this play. Drive starts at the 12. Center takes it to the 18. Gain of five actually starting from the 13. Second down and five coming up. Once again, center's getting a clean entrance to the hole. When I say hiccup, think about a hiccup. A little, a little change in your breathing, a little change in his footwork is what North Dakota State has been able to do, which has caused him not to get the big runs. So far, he's getting some clean entrances into the hole. Now the pursuit's getting to him, but he's getting clean entrances to the line of scrimmage. Eisen crowding the line, seven in the box, second and five. They're expecting a run, they get one. Center cuts it back and across the first down marker to the 25. Good run by Zenner, especially after that hiccup as he picks up seven. Yeah, he did a good job there. You know, he, he gathered his feet. Watch him here as he comes up there. You can see his feet stop momentarily there, but the offensive line is doing such a good job against the backside pursuit, he's able to cut it back. It's all in the offensive line right now. North Dakota State has got to do a better job getting off the blocks. Center has never had success against the Bison, but his best game was earlier this year on November 1st. He's off to a good start here. They go back to Zenner, trying to cut it back that time, but he was met in the middle. Nick there DeLuca it is. was there, gave him about one. There it is right there. Line of scrimmage. Can't get to the line of scrimmage as you look at it here on the replay. Watch what happens here. There's gold helmets and green jerseys. Causes them to hiccup. There's the backside pursuit. One yard gain. That's what North Dakota State does so well. They cuff it, meaning they turn everything back to their pursuit. And that was a perfect example of it there. The sophomore Brad Ambrosius with the first hit. Now second and nine. Schneider in motion. Schneider looks like he's kind of open there. Sumner looking that way. It's going to be to Winicky instead. And Winicky lost the ball at the end of the play. They'll rule it incomplete. They say he never had it. It'll be third down. Now, that's the matchup they want. And that's the matchup North Dakota State's worried about. They want the big guy, Zeneke, on the shorter DBs of North Dakota State. That's a play that's got to be made by the freshman Winnicky, who's up for the Jerry Rice Award as the top freshman in the country. One of the changes North Dakota State made from last game to this game is they put their top corner, C.J. Smith, who's a little taller than champion at 5'11", on Winnicky. Jack Rabbits one for three today on third down. Blitz coming, Sumner has to get rid of it. Throws it up for grabs along the sideline and out of bounds, looking for Wesley, incomplete. And anytime that blitz comes from the Bison, you see the panic in Sumner. Well, they have some very good blitz packages. What they'll do is they'll hug the running back with a blitzer, and then they'll send an extra linebacker, so they always have one extra guy coming, not enough guys to block him. And it really rattled the quarterback there as Zenner was just running for his life and had to throw it away. Good stop by the Bison. Third punt of the day coming from Ethan Sawyer. And here's where one of the big matchup problems is, is the punting game. Sawyer does not 
Look at that's a line drive kick very returnable ball but great coverage great coverage on that play by number 44 of the Jackrabbits. Randy Mangarelli. Mangarelli yeah he's a that that's great coverage because that was a line drive punt very returnable ball and if Mangarelli's not down there that's they're going to get some returns today because the, the the punting difference between these two teams is very evident just seeing that punt as opposed to the punt earlier the high driving punt by the bison well, who are the jackrabbits out of south dakota state brooking south dakota three and three all time in the fcs playoffs their fourth playoff appearance this was a team coach that only went to the playoffs one time as a division two school but now four appearances 11 seasons. You know, coach takes great pride in what's happened with that program. He's been there 28 years. Nice move up the middle for Crockett. He gained seven on that first down run, just darting through whatever was open. Okay, we, we talk a lot about Zach Center because he is a special back. But this John Crockett for the Bison, he's a special back himself, a senior. He's averaging 119 yards a game and 5.3 yards per carry, and everybody knows he's carrying the ball. Once again, that big offensive line for the Bison, only one returning starter is having their way right now, both running pass. Second down, they fake the handoff, and they throw it to the near side of the field for a first down as the catch was made by Darius Anderson, one of the backup running backs who doesn't see a whole lot of time. Great concept. What they do here, they have Darius going in motion. They bring him back with a little bootleg. He gets out to the flat with nobody on him. Well-conceived offensive play. Back into Jackrabbit territory go the Bison. Spending time with Tim Pulaski this week, the offensive coordinator. He is a really, really sharp coach really designs his offense well right there they run the power play he, he, he designs plays that fit their run very well synchronized between run and pass the play action pass is a big part of what the bison do this is a coaching staff that lost some of its members <laughs> Craig Bull the head coach went to Wyoming took some of the assistant coaches with him along with the offensive coordinator you know I got in here Thursday and they really opened up their office I had my own film room and Outstanding coaching staff, well coached football team. South Dakota State also very well coached. Here they're in empty, something they haven't shown a lot this year. Quarterbacks a threat here on draw or run here. We haven't seen Wentz take off yet today. See if he does it second and eight. There he goes on the draw play, straight up the middle as he shakes off a couple of tacklers, and the six foot six quarterback takes it to the 31 for a first down. Yeah, that's quarterback power. If we can look at that again, you'll see it's the same blocking scheme as when Crockett's carrying the ball, but the quarterback's carrying. You got the right side blocking down, the left guard pulling. It's a power O type play to the quarterback in an empty set. Spun between two defenders there. You see the quarterbacks put their head down and shake through the defense very often, but Carson Wentz showing his size advantage there for the Bison. Yeah, he's, you know, talking to the coaching staff from South Dakota State yesterday when they came here to practice, they said one of their biggest worries besides the run game and the play action pass is the ability of the quarterback to run the football. And there you got an example of it right there. The first 15 minutes of success for the boys in yellow and green, North Dakota State. With an early advantage over South Dakota State, the Bison up 7-0 after one in Fargo. Second round playoff matchup, second quarter beginning here at the Fargo Dome, 7-0 North Dakota State with the lead. Coach, how would you assess the first 15 minutes for the Bison? Well, I think they've, they've done a really good job offensively. Their protection's been good. Uh, big difference in the game right now is the play of the quarterback uh, with, with with the advantage going to Wentz over Sumner. Sumner right now is only four for ten, and that's a big difference. Crockett on the sweep gets the handoff, trying to cut it back. And Crockett leads to the 25. Cut down by Dallas Brown. Gain of six. Yeah, right now the, the the, the, the piece of the puzzle that's uh, really going in the Bison favor is the play of the quarterback right now. Carson Wentz, five for seven for 92 yards and a touchdown, and doing a very good job not only with his legs but with his arm, and also the play of the offensive line, giving him the time he needs. 
uh, to get the ball downfield. Empty again, could be quarterback run, but once again, how do you play? You play five in the box, which they have right now. This is a run type of look. Wentz will keep it after faking the sweep and the hit in the backfield takes Wentz to the ground. It was Kellen Sulek who broke up the play with the initial hit. Sherlock and Clody there to finish the tackle. E excellent play by Sulek here. Watch number 94 get penetration. Beats the left guard, and that's what does it. The left guard has an inside shade on him. Center's got to give him a little help coming out of there. That's a tough assignment for the left guard. <coughs> Wentz ended up losing three on the play. Sulek from South Dakota, a redshirt freshman. Good job there to back up the Bison a little bit. Now they need seven on this third down. They're one for two today. Showing blitz. They might be pulling out of it now. Now here it comes. They're bringing the blitz. And Wentz staying tall in the pocket now has a lot of room in front. Big running room for Carson Wentz. First down, catch it back, touchdown! The old saying there, sometimes you live by the sword or you die by the sword. That time the blitz came, they had three rushers. The quarterback makes a play. Everybody's got their back turned to him. The blitz is getting there, there's an alley. Everybody's in coverage. It's a walk in. Right now, big difference in this football game is number 11, Carson Wentz, just a junior. 6'6, 231 pounds. And watching him practice on Thursday, he's got a cannon for an arm. Extra point is good for Adam Keller. A 27 yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Carson Wentz. Escaping the blitz and heading all the way to the end zone to give the Bison a 14-0 lead. Fourteen nothing North Dakota State now at the lead coach Carson Wentz getting it done with his legs. Well, when you're gonna blitz the quarterback, you can see here you've got to keep pass rush lane integrity meaning you've got to stay in your lanes of the quarterback watch here 17 gets washed out 36 gets washed out huge running lane for the quarterback now you got to remember everybody in the secondary is covering man they got their back turned to it you have got to keep the integrity of your rush lanes South Dakota lost the integrity of their rush lanes quarterback with that kind of athletic ability scores seven plays 64 yards three minutes 56 seconds Wentz going for 27 on the touchdown run. Now Brady Mangarelli, two yards deep in the end zone, will have a seat. That was the fourth rushing touchdown for Wentz this season. Now South Dakota State needs to answer offensively. Zach Zenner has been okay so far, but Austin Sumner has had a tough day. Well, he's had a really tough day. The, the thing is, is he, he looks like he's a little jittery in the pocket. Now, there was some pressure early in the game. And when, when, when he's feeling the pressure, you can see right now he's not setting his feet. He's not finishing his throws. That's why the balls have been high. He's got guys open. He has got to settle down. The offensive line has got to hold up. And they've got to do a better job throwing the football. He's four for ten which is not good numbers. Got blitz on here. And movement on the offensive line. Nick Carr was the first. Full start of the offense, number 85. Five yard penalty, first down. They call it on the tight end, Cam Jones. Nick Carr moved as well. And Nick Carr's back in the game. They've been alternating their left tackle. Both of those guys playing against Kyle Emanuel. They had the blitz on that time, so probably got a little bit antsy. They looked like they had a run on, obviously, from the way they came off the ball. But you could see that North Dakota was in a blitz look. Now the Jackrabbits backed up to their own 20 with this place making all kinds of noise. And now that now... Snemner will swing it out to Trevor Wesley. And Wesley back to the original line of scrimmage, a gain of five. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, the numbers are right for him. They got two on two on the perimeter. Good block by the outside receiver. Get a five-yard gain. Now they're sitting at second and ten. Now they're in nickel. Okay, so nickel's in, and they're going to try to get the matchup that they want. Watch Winicky against C.J. Smith. That's the matchup we should be watching. It's at the top of the field. See if Sumner looks that way off play action on second down. Sumner in trouble. Able to stay up and find Trevor Wesley at the 39. First down 
A gain of 14 and a good job that time by Sumner with the pressure coming. Yeah, he did a good job and there was nowhere to throw Winnicky the ball. Great job of coverage by C.J. Smith. Watch Kyle Emanuel here, coach. Almost got him. They're trying to double him a little bit with the tackle and the tight end. Emmanuel just goes inside. He's got a motor. He just keeps playing. Zach Center this time trying to get through a big time pressure from the Bison. They had five green jerseys get through the offensive line. Tangway with the tackle. It could have been any one of them. Yeah, that's a. Uh, uh, that's the North Dakota State cone or cup. They force everything back inside to the pursuit. They make the back stop his feet. Well executed defense. The right tackle. Top offensive lineman for South Dakota State. That's the second time in this game I've seen him get up slow. Trevor Geiger, a senior who was first team all conference. It looks like he's hurt over there at the right tackle position. They can't afford that in this game. The only senior on the offensive line. Second and nine play action. Sumner eyeing his receiver now has to get away from the pressure again. Throws it off balance out of bounds. And a big hit there. That is a late CJ hit. CJ Smith, he will be penalized as Winnicky got knocked from behind and it looked like he went over a rail over there on the sideline. Yeah, he, he, th there, there is no excuse for that kind of hit late. C.J. Smith was real proud of himself after he made the hit too. Yeah, well, you know, going into this game, one of the key guys they had to stop in this game was Winnicky and you can see the matchup First there. Foul. The matchup there. Under going the for. Office, defense number six. <laughs> 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. Hey, boo, but this was egregious. Yeah, I think so. And the matchup they're looking for in this game is they want Winnicky, but the matchup that North Dakota State wants, the adjustment they've made is C.J. Smith to cover. Last time, Winnicky had his way with Jordan Champion, who's just a little bit shorter. It was good coverage, but Winnicky was able to out-jump him. Actually, the, didn't look as bad on the replay, but Smith no, did hit no. himself in the chest a few times. I after. think it's what he did after the hit. Zach Center has been the only running back that's carried the football for the Jackrabbits. He gets away. And Zenner finally able to be taken down at the 38, gain of seven. He has been a ground and pound type today. Well, I tell you, this is all Zach Center here. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. He just keeps pounding, churning his legs, moving. I was talking to him yesterday at their practice. He's a pre-med major, wants to go into orthopedics. My son is also an orthopedic so I know what kind of discipline you have to have as a student and a football player to be a biology major and a football player of his caliber. A lot of smart kids on this South Dakota State team. Three men, biology majors, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, very, very good students. Second and three. Sumner in trouble and down he goes. The blitz came from Ashley Thornton. Zenner couldn't block him and Thornton gets the sack. Yeah, Ashley Thornton. Strong side linebacker coming off the edge. This is a strong side linebacker coming off the edge. Thornton. Right there, Zach Zenner has got to make a better block than that on the edge. Going back to Zach Zenner again, though, how many times you have a guy that's up for two awards? The most valuable football player in the FCS and the top student athlete. That's that's the academic and athletic Heisman of football. Peyton Award and the Campbell Award. It's third and 15. Play clock running down. Sumner just barely gets the playoff. Throwing on the run, out of bounds, incomplete. A flag comes in at the end of the play near where the ball was thrown out of bounds. One thing I just noticed on that play right there. The quarterback's eyes are on the rush. They're not downfield. And, and that is a critical mistake he's making right now. He cannot Holding be looking at the rush. Defense number 24. <laughs> and your penalty, automatic, first down. Jack Rabbit's bailed out in a big way here as we take a look at Sumner trying to avoid the rush. Maybe, maybe we can see his eyes right here. Watch him. See right here, you see his eyes. Now right here, they're going to look down. 
And when those eyes go down and that ball goes down, he's feeling pressure. He's got to move up into the pocket. He can't always be escaping the pocket. His escape route is always to the right or to the left. He's got to feel the pocket. He's got to be able to step up. He's got to be able to finish throws. Coach, that was a huge penalty defensive holding on the ball that was thrown out of bounds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are not characteristic of the Bison making those kind of mistakes. And now a fresh set of downs for the Jackrabbits. The give goes to Brady Mangarelli, and Mangarelli gets through inside the 20, down at the 18. The backup running back, it was Zenner who took the snap and handed it off to Mangarelli. Yeah, that's a little change up. They haven't shown that a whole lot. You know, when, when Zenner's in the backfield, he's usually carrying it. That time, he runs the read option, just like a quarterback. And the inside pursuit by a newcomer, Nick DeLuca, doesn't get there, so the cut doesn't hold up. First time in the red zone today for the Jackrabbits. Pretty good this season. Top 20 in the FCS. Again, the Wildcat. Again, Zenner hands it off. But this time, Mangarelli goes down near the line. A gain of one. It looked like it was Carlton Littlejohn there for the tackle. Littlejohn's been involved quite a few times today in his third year as a starter. And Zach Zenner's thinking to himself there, I wish I had that play over again because he should have kept the ball. The read was to keep the ball, and he handed it off. Now second and nine, Zenner once again, the quarterback. This is definitely a big wrinkle. They talked about some wrinkles for this game. This is definitely one of them. They run the option, Zenner keeps it this time, looking for room up the middle. Zenner cuts it out to the left and finds the end zone. Touchdown, South Dakota State. I'll tell you what, that's a pretty darn good wrinkle because North Dakota State was not ready for that. That time they faked the fly sweep and he kept it with a load blocker coming across. Watch number 30 coming across, picking up a block. It's like a power play off the fly sweep. Zenner hits it, never has to break stride, and he's gone. He saw the opening in the end zone, just had to outrun Colton Hegel to it, and he did. 17-yard touchdown run for Zenner. That's his 21st touchdown of the year. And it caps an eight-play, 75-yard drive for the Jackrabbits. Oh. That was a big, big series. The Rabbits needed that. Sierra Vodka hits his 104th consecutive extra point after Zach Zenner puts the Jack Rabbits on the board. A touchdown they needed in Fargo. Quite a wrinkle in the Jack Rabbits offense. Zach Zenner running the Wildcat formation and scoring a touchdown off it to get South Dakota State on the board. And now a one possession game again. Well, yesterday here at the Dome, Coach Stiegelmeyer said, I said, uh, what, what, what plans you got? Anything different? He goes, well, we got a few wrinkles. Well, we saw some of them right there. 18 years on the job for Coach Stiegelmeyer. He's learned a thing or two. Oh, he's been around a long time. Great loyalty. 28 years in the South Dakota State program. He's been there from its inception almost. Also played in the program as the kickoff comes from Jake Carlson. A good one into the end zone. And now the Bison will have it at their own 25. We'll start you off here with the touchdown play, Coach. Well, first of all, they're going to fake the fly sweep to the right. You're going to pull the right guard, and number 30 is also going to come over. They're going to run quarterback power. That's all it is. Zenner running the power play just out of a different look. Zenner finding each and every hole there was, including that run to the end zone. Chris Kleiman was very upset with the officials because of that defensive holding on third and 15 that kept that last drive alive. Well, yeah, they, they, they should have been off the field, but you know, we got to move on from that. They got to get another drive going. Now it's going to be really important to see if South Dakota State can put a stop on right here. It's a movement there by the fullback yeah. for uh, North Dakota State. On the offense, number 46. That's Andrew Bonner. Have your penalty. First team all conference. You talk about old school. That guy's an old school fullback. He's tough. He can block. He can catch. He's very athletic. He's got some hair, too. He had 13 catches this season. He's had 40 catches in his career, only one rushing attempt. Yeah, they don't give him the bone too much. Now first and 15 after that penalty. A chance here for South Dakota State to really turn this game around after a touchdown and a defensive stop here would be huge. Wentz moves it out to the right side. He's grabbed from behind. Got to hang on to that guy. Wentz ends up getting a couple of yards, but J.R. Plody grabbed him and held him. 
Boy, we're, we're, we're talking about Plody a lot here today at junior at 6'3", 245 pounds, 32 tackles on the year, 3.5 for loss and one sack. He's stepping up big here today, number 91. John Stiegelmeyer in his 18th season trying to get this team to the quarterfinals for the first time. They've never made it out of the second round in the FCS playoffs. One play at a time. One play at a time is what he's talking about. And second and long play action. Wentz too high. He got hit as he threw the ball. I like the way he stands in the pocket. Kerry Woods, the intended receiver. Looks like one of the flag didn't get one. See, that's what you got to do. His eyes are downfield. Watch, watch him in the pocket here. There is no hesitation. There is no jittery movement. His hand gets hit after the throw, but this guy stands tall in the pocket. He's got very good what I call pocket awareness. His eyes are downfield. Here we go, empty. He's got numbers at the top. I see him going top with this. Three down lineman on third and 13. Wentz is going to try to run it himself. Gets across the 30, gets smacked at the 32. He is stopped there, short of the first down by Nick Mears. Out about 10, needed 13, and now North Dakota State will punt, so the Jackrabbits get the stop they needed after a yeah. score. And here's one of the big differences, and I think that favors North Dakota State, is Ben LeBanc, first team all Missouri Valley Conference punter. Averaging 45 yard with a long of 66 had a boomer last time and uh, We'll see what he does this time big change of field position here if he can hit it Jerian Butler is back deep This is a bomb off the foot of Lacombe sending Butler back inside the 10 as he makes the catch while going backward But looking for a seam Jerian Butler has blockers in front oh, a flag, flag comes in as Butler takes <laughs> off Two men to block in front of him. Butler is going to take it all the way inside the 15 before LeCompte finally runs him down. But a block and an injured Bison player back at the 24 yard line. It's Zach Colvin who is down inside the 25. Well, we had a booming punt, and sometimes when you kick it that far, you outkick your coverage. And that, that was a great move by the punt returner. Made one great move, took it outside and up, and was gone. But that was a booming kick, and it's going to get called back, though, I believe. So Colvin down back at the 24. Ref still sorting it out. There's no foul for an illegal block in the back. The block is from the side. First down, San Diego State. Wow, wow that Big is play. a huge play to Ryan Butler's punt return to the 11 counts. No, yeah. that's a clean block. That's a clean block. It was Tom Pites. Hit him in the chest. Yeah, that's a clean block by number four. Good wave off by the officials. That's the right call. 80-yard punt return should have been a touchdown. Really, the punter was the only man for two members of the Jackrabbits to block. They didn't block him thinking the play was over because of that flag. So South Dakota State really should have had a touchdown there, but they'll take it from the 11. And this might loom very, very big in the outcome of this game. And it looks like they're going wildcat again. Zach Zenner in at quarterback. Angarelli and Gandy to his side. Zenner keeps it himself as he trips inside the five. Gain of six. It'll be second down and four. They can get a first down at the one yard line. Well, right now, this little wrinkle of Zach Zenner at quarterback with two backs in the backfield has given the Bison some problems. One thing you got to realize is I don't think Zach, I don't know, maybe he can throw the ball. That would be interesting if he throws it. Saw Austin Sumner on the sideline. Zenner has not tried to pass this season. They're filling up the box right now, though. Second down, Zenner taken off, looking to cut it back, and he only gets to the four. A gain of one. It'll be third down and three. That's a perfect example of the cut. The cut, hard contain on the outside. Watch it here. There's going to be hard contain on the outside, going back to their principles. Right there. They make it come back. That's a great job by number 35, Christian Duzik. Well, everybody in this building knows 
South Dakota State's going to run the football. Their quarterback is on the sideline. They haven't put a new one in. Zach Lujan is the backup, but it's center running the Wildcat here on third and three. Now they're in what they call their delta formation. That timeout has been called. First charge timeout, North Dakota State. The Bison stopping the play with 5.41 remaining in this first half. It was a 14-0 lead for North Dakota State, but this game has changed. South Dakota State got in the end zone, got a big punt return. Now they're near the goal line looking to tie this game. Down 14, nothing at one point. John Stiegelmeyer's got his team in position possibly to tie this game. It's going to Third be the, and three at the four yard line. Same personnel grouping. Zach Zenner still a quarterback. Jack Rabbit's trying to advance to the quarterfinals for the first time in school history and stop this Bison rain. I believe they will run the ball to the right. That's what they do. Zenner cuts it back to the middle and across the goal line. Flagged at the end of the play. But right now it's a touchdown for South Dakota State. When they get in that formation, they are going to key where number 20 is. A couple flags right on top of the goal line at the end of the play as Jenner was going across. It's been an interesting call. I don't know what you call down there except for maybe holding. Maybe a face mask. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The result of play is a touchdown. Now Zenner grabbed from behind, oh, yeah. yanked backward, and still was able to get across the goal line. Great effort by Zenner. That was all him on this drive and the last one. Zach Zenner, maybe he's never had much success against the Bison in his career, but he has today. 12 carries, 70 yards, and a touchdown. Now two touchdowns. Well, he's been hearing about it for a long time. You've had a lot of great games, but never against the Bison. And uh, just meeting him yesterday, you can tell that sort of sticking with him a little bit. He came out to prove himself today, and so far, big numbers. Justin Siravatka ties the game. It was 14-0 North Dakota State, and now back to even. And Zach Zenner, 74 yards now for the day, two touchdowns to even the score. The 2014 NCAA Division I football championship continues next weekend with the quarterfinal games on December 13th. All games will be on the Watch ESPN app and ESPN3.com. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Short drive there, Coach, after the punt return by Jerian Butler. But Zach Zenner running the Wildcat, able to get through. Well, it came back to the booming punt. That was a great punt. That punt had to be over 60 yards. Sometimes, if you don't get enough hang time on those 60-yard punts, if you can make the first man miss, which Butler did, you got a chance for a big return. But the Bison have got to spread the net. There was nobody to the left. They were out of their lanes. And that's why the big return came. And then Zenner did the rest out of the Wildcat offense. They're running their same plays. They're running the same plays they've run the whole year. It's just the quarterbacks involved with the read option, the power play, and the plays that the quarterback usually is handing it off on. Now Jay Carlson after the face mask will kick from the 50, and he will just blast it to the back of the end zone. So North Dakota State will get the ball from their own 25-yard line. We take a look at the brackets. On the other side of things, New Hampshire winning today, beating Fordham. They will play Chattanooga next week after they took out the Sycamores. Illinois State leading Northern Iowa. Montana and Eastern Washington just getting started out. Spokane on that red turf. The red Eastern turf. Washington. That's a wild looking turf. <laughs> and then on the other side of the bracket, the winner of this game is going to be playing Coastal Carolina. The Chanticleers did win. They beat Richmond today. So Coastal Carolina goes to the quarterfinals. Now we're going to see what the Bison are made out of for the first time their backs up against the wall in this game. First time in the playoffs probably in years as Crockett gets a yard to the 26. Last year North Dakota State stampeded through the playoffs. Their closest game in the postseason was the championship game which they won 35 to 7. Wow. Well you know in, in, in this game last year South Dakota State had the lead at halftime. Jack Rapids were up 10-6 at halftime in that one. They lost. 
37 to 17 on November 1st. Somebody, John. somebody's got to hit the switch here. Zach, Zach, the the quarterback has been the difference. Carson Wentz right now. They got to get this run game going. They'll try to on second down, but hit in the backfield and unable to get anything. Is John Crockett, the host of Jackrabbits. T.J. Lolly was there. So was the freshman, J.T. Hassel. Jesse Bobbitt with the first hit. Jesse Bobbitt, that's a very good play by him. I mean, he just hits that thing in the backfield. They're playing downhill now. This is third and long. It's a face you don't see in Fargo too often come playoff time. One of concern. There's a lot of game left in this one, though. Third and 12. Four man rush. Wentz has time. Goes the short route, the check down to Crockett, who makes the catch but can't get away. Although a second effort he almost did as Dallas Brown finally grabbed him. Four oh. jerseys take him out of bounds, there's but there's a flag. a flag. And that might be the jump start this crowd was waiting for. Might be a payback, too. You know, that, that, that was close. I mean, he's on the sideline, had a couple extra blue helmets come in and pepper the pile. That's probably what it was called for. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds, defense. Number 54. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That might be from that argument earlier in the half. I, I, I think that's a payback call. Where's the hit? Yeah, there, there, there really is. He was inbounds when they hit him. I, I think that's a payback call. And uh, let's give credit to Coach Kleiman. Coach Kleiman got their attention. He got his payback call, and now we're all even. Let's go. First down. They're talking about it right now. There's the payback call. Because I don't know if that was a late hit. They're talking probably about that Wildcat Delta formation where you have three backs in the backfield. How are they going to stop that? That was a third down play, too. Now ball at the 46. As Wentz keeps it off the fake, gets a yard to the 47. It'll be second down and nine. That would have been a play that South Dakota State would have forced another punt, would have forced a three and out to get the ball back. Already scoring 14 unanswered points. Good discipline there by Landon Schultz at the line of scrimmage, winning his one on one, making the play on the quarterback because if he doesn't get off the block, that one's going for some yards. Wentz is the leading rusher so far today for the Bison with 46. Crockett has been held down, nine carries, 34 yards. It's Bonnet going in motion. Now John Crockett up the middle, dances to a 50. It's met by a bunch of white jerseys at the 49. About four yards there for Crockett. It'll be third and five. Big play right here. Third and five. You pass midfield. You know, this, 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 is, this is a big one. They're coming in with a different personnel grouping right now. Let's see if South Dakota, yep, yeah, South Dakota goes to their nickel package. So right now with three receivers in the game, Goes five DBs, take a linebacker out for South Dakota. They're anticipating pass, but the thing you got to worry about here is Carson Wentz going to run the draw or run the ball himself. Bonnet goes out in motion again, third and five. Play action. Wentz with lots of time. Wentz going deep, looking for Gebhardt, and it's knocked away, incomplete. No flags, good defense. Trey Carr with the coverage. Very good defense by Carr, only a freshman. But he looks back to the football, does an excellent job once again. Wentz does a great job in the pocket. Pocket, watch the defensive back, look back for the ball. Great play. Right now he sees the receiver looking back, he looks back. That's great defense right there. He's just a freshman. Now Ben Lecomte out for the punt. Jerrion Butler back deep. Already has a big return today. This one looks unreturnable over to the sideline. It bounces out of bounds. Inside the 20 around the 17. So South Dakota State has held up after falling behind 14-0 in this one. They've fought back into a tie. And as we near halftime here, Coach. We got a football game, Wayne. We sure do. Yeah, we got a game. This is a football game here now. Zach Zenner has 74 yards rushing. It looks like Sumner might come back in here, but Zenner just 40 yards away now from 2,000 on the season, which would be his third straight 2,000-yard season, and he's 70 yards away 
from the all-time Division One record set by Adrian Peterson of Georgia Southern. Not that Adrian Peterson. Yeah. The other one. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. If South Dakota State is going to win this game, though, they got to get better play out of their quarterback. They've got to get better play out of the quarterback. See the day for Zenner. Sumner's not coming back in. It's going to be Zenner running the Wildcat again, Coach. Zenner keeps it off the option and pushes the pile to the 21. He gains five. It's amazing what Zenner has done when everybody in this building knows he's probably the guy who's going to get the ball. Well, I'd be really amazed if, if, if this offense complete, it, it continues to churn because I believe North Dakota State and that Bison coaching staff will make some adjustments to stop this run game. Because what it is now is you're playing against an option run team now with, with Zenner at quarterback. You don't have to worry about the throw. I don't think he can throw it. Second down, Zenner shakes off the first tackler. And hikes his way into a pile at the 22. It'll be third down and four. I mean, it's one thing to run this offense when you're in the red zone. It's another thing to run it when you have the entire field in front of you. Yeah, well, if you don't have the ability to throw the ball, it really limits you. Looks like they're bringing their quarterback back in here. Third down, big down right here, third and three. Been a while since we've seen Austin Sumner just 6 of 12 in this game for 41 yards. Sumner will hand it off in the counter and a lot of room for Zenner. First down yardage as Zenner gets to the 28, make it the 29. That's another little wrinkle in four games. I didn't see that play. That's the sprint draw cutback. He's looking, making it look like they're sprint out, which they run a lot. Watch here. He's going on sprint protection with a cutback play. That's number 53, Emmanuel, using his aggressive play on the backside against him. Now Sumner tosses it out to the wide side of the field as Schneider makes a catch and a move across the 40, lost the ball, and just knocks it out of bounds. Good awareness there by Trevor Wesley. It's a play there, yes. A flag is also down. You know, one thing I noticed about neither one of those, neither one of these teams have their names on the back of their jerseys. Holding on the offense, number 83. Oh. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Holding against Schneider. Bison have two timeouts. Now the Jackrabbits might just settle to take this game into halftime. I used to take, I used to take a lot of grief. This, this is a good job making a guy miss here. That's, that's a really good job. They knocked the ball out. It's a heads up play by the wide receiver. You know, neither team has their name on the jersey going back to that. I used to take a lot of uh, criticism for not putting the names on the players' backs when I was a head coach. But I think that states it's all about team, not about individuals. First and 17, they run the draw to center, and he gets bottled up quickly. Good hit there by Ambrosius, the sophomore. As time continues to dwindle in this first half. Maybe one more play, why even bother? Flag comes in as the Bison had 12 men on the field. So South Dakota State will get a free play here to end the first half. I only saw 11 out there. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, Prior to the snap, second charge, timeout. Yeah, North Dakota one. State. This is a 30 second timeout. The Bison got the timeout as one of their players was trying to sprint off the field. The flag came in. But the timeout was called first. Oh, you see yeah. it here on the near yeah. side of the field as the player's sprinting off. Yeah. So that guy got out of there so fast I lost him. <laughs> Three seconds left in this first half. And coach, we saw North Dakota State come out. Looked like it was going to be a blowout. But this guy, John Stiegelmeyer, his team has made a pure grit. Well, that, that punt, the booming punt that could have had South Dakota State backed up inside the five ends up being a seven points the other way. That was that was the big play of the half was the run on the punt return. Jerian Butler an 80 yard punt return all the way to the 11 yard line to the Bison. And I think that punt had to travel over 60 yards. Okay. Halftime report coming up. We'll have dancing coaches. That must mean you're going to do a jig at halftime. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. As long as they turn off the lights and put all those flickering <laughs> lights on, I'll be ready for them. Great first half here in Fargo it was the Bison who jumped out to an early lead. A 14-0 start. Carson Wentz with a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. 
But South Dakota State able to come back and make things interesting. Zach Jenner and the gang tying it up at 14. Welcome back to the second round of the NCAA FCS Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Part of Jimmy B. Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Back inside the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State and South Dakota State in the second round matchup tied at 14 as the second half is about to begin. The Bison will receive the football. Eric Perkins is going to be deep for him, just a sophomore. He's only had he's only had three returns this year. Uh, two as a kickoff return, three as a punter. They're uh, trying to save some of their starting players. They think this guy has some juice, though, so we'll see what happens because South Dakota State's kickoff man is going to let you have a chance for some returns. Jake. Like, uh, it's going to down. Jay Carlson gets a touchback out of it. It's Perkins, a couple of yards deep, takes an ease. So now the Bison bring out their offense. From their own 25 yard line, you mentioned it there at halftime, coach. In the first half, Carson Wentz, the leading rusher for the Bison. John Crockett struggled, 10 carries, 38 yards. That's not Bison football. And I have a feeling the coaching staff for North Dakota State had a nice long talk with the offensive line and the running backs, saying, We got to establish our identity here in the second half. The seven seed Coastal Carolina has advanced to the quarterfinals. Winner of this game will play them next week. It'll be here at the Fargo Dome if the Bison win. If it's South Dakota State, they'll stay on the road and have to go to Coastal Carolina next week. First play of the second half is a swing pass out near the sideline, and Zach Braw finally gets his first catch of the day, the leading receiver on this club, and hasn't seen anything yet in this game. No, they've done a good job. You know, and, and, and their defense of South Dakota State has really played well today. The number one thing they've taken away is the tailback runs. But North Dakota State really hasn't stuck with it too much. And I, I expect to see them really try to hammer the tailback here in the second half. At least the start of the second half to establish a ground game. Second down, there's John Crockett. Crockett gets across the 35, up to the 36 for a first down pickup. Yeah, that, that, that time they just ran the weak side zone play with a little cutback. Good yardage, good pickup. It, it, it's a grinding effect that that the Bison have shown all year on film. They just grind the ball, they wear you out. It's a softening effect, and and let's see if they can do that in the second half. Last year, last uh, earlier in the year in the game, that's what the Bison did in the second half. They had a long drive and turned the game around in the first drive of the second half. They go back to Crockett on first down. He gets a couple of yards up the middle. Jumped on top by Jack Sherlock to finish the tackle. It'll be second down at about eight. That game on November 1st, South Dakota State led at halftime 10 6, but it was North Dakota State with a huge second half, winning 37 17 and protecting the Dakota marker. Yeah, it, it, it was the run game that turned that game around, too, in the second half. Bison have won the Dakota marker five times. They've beaten the Jackrabbits six straight, including a playoff game two years ago. Second down, play action with Wentz rolling out. Has room to run if he wants it. Instead, he waits too long, has to get chased out and grabbed from behind the tackle by T.J. Lolly. Take a look at the last time these two teams played for the Dakota marker, which is not on the line here in this playoff game. North Dakota State with a huge second half, 290 yards on the ground in that game. The time of possession was huge, though. 38 minutes to 28 minutes, that's that's a huge difference. And that's when the pounding effect of, of the Bison offense really goes into full play. They're down here, though, Coach. They need five. Passing situation for them unless they decide to keep the quarterback with the ball. Wentz is trying to draw them off sides and a flag comes in. Illegal snap, offense number 76. Five yard penalty, third down. Jesse Hines, the center, snapped it too quick. Yeah, first team all conference center. The only senior in the offensive line to get the center for procedure. Back up in his first three seasons, starting for the first time this year. Chris Kleiman can't be happy with that. Not the way they wanted to come out in the second half. Now it's third and ten. Empty backfield. Could see draw here. They're fitting the safety down inside, though. I think they're going to be throwing it. And they actually jumped off sides again. It'll be third and 15. 
False start on the offense. Number three. Five yard penalty. Third down. That time it was Gebhardt. He's starting to get a little impatient here in Fargo. Well, they're not used to seeing these type of mistakes. But you know, one thing about this team that not many people talk about is they're sitting at 11 and 1. There's a lot of new players on this football team. A lot of the seniors from last year's national championship team have departed. This team's got a lot of young players. This is a new experience. First playoff game for a lot of them. Seven penalties. Starters. Seven penalties, coach. Two on this drive. Now third and 15 play action. Wentz has time. Wentz airing it out. Going deep for Fraw, who makes the catch and then oh. dropped it at the last moment. It's incomplete. He had it going up. He couldn't corral it coming down. Well, that was a perfectly thrown ball once again by Carson Wentz and good protection. Uh, that, that's a big play that goes by the wayside. Good job of adjusting to the football. Just loses it as he's trying to tuck it coming down. Ben LeCompte is the punter. Jerian Butler back deep at his own 24. Good kick. It's high and spiraling. Butler with a fair catch made at the 16-yard line. They'll give him the 17 on that fair catch. South Dakota State trying to advance to the quarterfinals for the first time ever. North Dakota State looking to win its fourth straight FCS championship. These two teams looking to move on to the quarterfinals next week against Coastal Carolina. They beat the Spiders earlier, 36-15. Sam Houston State trying to pull off the upset over Jacksonville State. Same for Liberty at Villanova today. 52-yard punt, another booming punt, and a change in field position in favor of the Bison. Let's see if they can stop him here. Zach Zender hasn't been stopped much today. And center to the 22. He's not playing five. quarterback, Wayne. <laughs> nope, Austin <laughs> Sumner back in there. Five yards there for Zenner as he starts to make his play for 2,000 yards rushing this year and the all-time FCS rushing record. This crowd, this crowd starting to get up, making some noise, getting behind their defense. Big series for the Bison. Second down, they give it to Zenner again. And Zenner cut down in the backfield this time. Nick DeLuca, the middle linebacker, in there for the injured Travis Beck making the play. Yeah, Travis Beck, who was the fourth leading tackler on the team. Torres Achilles 10 in the last game of the season. Very nice play there by DeLuca. Just a sophomore at six foot 220, six foot three, 239 pound sophomore stepping in for the second team all Missouri Valley Conference player. Third and four, South Dakota State, three for six on third down today. They flip it to Mangarelli, who ships away from one man, then another cuts it back again, and Mangarelli gets the first down yes, to does. the 30-yard line. Well, there's another little wrinkle. I haven't seen that play on film. It's fake fly shovel pass. Boy, this is something else. Fake the fly, shovel it back the other way. Miss tackle there, miss tackle there, miss tackle again. That's uncharacteristic of the Bison defense. But there's another little wrinkle. John Stiegelmeyer, you got to give him credit for the game plan. Oh, yeah. After 28 years in one school, he's got a playbook. I'll tell you that. Sumner hands it off to Zenner. Zenner in the middle of the field across the 40. 11 yards on the sprint draw again. Another first down, and now he is very close to 2,000 for the season. Once again, they're faking the sprint to the right. One of their favorite rollout passes and run and draw back opposite, taking advantage both times of Kyle Emanuel over pursuing from the backside. So they're taking the aggressiveness of defensive end Kyle Emanuel and working it against him on that sprint cutback draw. Nine away from 2,000, 40 away from the FCS rushing record. Play action, Sumner with time. Sumner going deep, Schneider is open. Schneider makes the catch at the 20 yard line. Big pass play for the Jackrabbits and a first down. They get Schneider one on one with Colton Hegel, the strong safety, and he wins the matchup. They got him in man coverage. Heigel can't do it.
and they are definitely in field goal range. The, the line of demarcations about the 25 yard line for their kicker. 38 yards on that long pass to Schneider. Now Zach Zenner on the handoff. Zenner fights to the 20, gets a yard. It'll be second and nine with that last catch. Schneider now second in South Dakota State history as far as all-time receptions. A lot of record breakers on this Jack Rabbit team really experiencing this kind of success for the first time. A win today would give them their first 10-win season and their first ever trip to the quarterfinals. Yeah, they're, 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 a good, they're a good football program. They've only been in FCS division from Division II for a few years, and they only went to the playoffs one time as a Division II football program. Four times since then in 11 seasons. Second down, they run. Center goes down in the backfield. Brian Schatz, the defensive tackle. Big Brian Schatz, 6'1", 285. He just shoots a gap, makes a huge play. He comes right over the left guard, watching between the left guard and the center. Right behind, he, as, the, as the left guard steps down, he comes back door on him. Big play in the backfield. Little mess up on, per, on, on blocking scheme there. He shouldn't be coming free through that backside gap. Third and 14. Jack Rabbits are in field goal range. They have a very good kicker in Justin Siravaka. Sutton there looking for the fade to Schneider near the end zone. It's incomplete and actually the play blown dead before it started because of a penalty. A lot better play by Bryce Silvering on uh, Kyle Emanuel that time. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 83. Five-yard penalty, third down. Mentioned the field goal range. That's a big penalty as far as that concerned. Now it's a 47-yard field yeah. goal attempt from there instead of 42. Now it's a 47-yarder. That's that, that is a big change. That is actually one yard longer than Siravatka's longest this season, although indoors. We figure this is probably the tip of his range. You know, I watched him kick it before the game. I was down on the field, and he was pretty consistent at about 45 to 40 yards. He was working on it, and, and, and they didn't have great length, but they were accurate. Third and 19. They go short in the traffic. Great catch by Winicky, looking to turn the corner, and Winicky at least gets him back into a more manageable field goal to the 16, about five yards shy of the first down. Be about a 33-yard field goal, depending on the spot here. Do a good job on the twist inside. Nice job by the inside three of the Jackrabbits. Great one-handed catch in traffic. And a redshirt freshman, Jake Winicky, and now Justin Siravatka, who's only missed one field goal attempt all season. Will try to hit from 33. And Sierra Vodka puts it right down the middle yep. out of the hold of Tyler Finnis to give South Dakota State its first lead. Eight plays, 67 yard drive, and it's Sierra Vodka who puts the Jackrabbits on top. 17 unanswered points from South Dakota State. They lead for the first time in this second round playoff matchup. 17-14 over the Bison and coach North Dakota State saw their 33 game win streak come to an end earlier this year against Northern Iowa. They have a 20 game home win streak on the line and plus this, this is a trip to the quarterfinals on the line. They need to figure things out. Well, you know, they come out in the second half. They're forced to punt South Dakota State drives it down kicks a field goal. South Dakota State right now has the momentum. They have gotten away early in the game if you remember. North Dakota State came out and ran, ran their bread and butter. They were running the power for five, six, seven yards of crack. Remember, the umpire got run over the one time. They have not come back to the power play. They're running inside zone. They're running sprint out. They're, they're not really playing bison football, and I expect to see him change that. But, but right now, South Dakota State's got the momentum. Made seven penalties in this game as well. A couple on the last drive that took a third and five and made it a third and 15. And penalties led to one of the South Dakota State touchdowns. Jay Carlson on the kickoff. It's spinning back and staying in bounds right on the goal line. Picked up by Perkins, who gets it out to the 20-yard line. 
Good return by Eric Perkins on a ball that nearly went out of bounds but stayed in. Now North Dakota State brings the offense out from their own 20 yard line. What needs to change offensively from when they had a 14 nothing lead to now when they're trailing. I think they got to start grinding on South Dakota State a little bit. They were, you know, that is what they do. They grind on people. Then they play action pass off it. We really haven't seen, except for the one play action pass bootleg, it's been drop back. They need to get back to their bread and butter, run the ball, play action pass, and play Bison football. Wentz going under center here. That's Bonnet out to make it an offset eye with Crockett the deep back. A pass on first down. Pocket collapses. Wentz escapes. I'm trying to run it to make something out of it. He gets a couple of yards. Jesse Bobbitt was there for the tackle, so was TJ Lawley. But once again, even there, if you look at that play develop, that's it doesn't really look like play action, and that's something they do so well. They run the ball very well this year, 12th in FCS, but much different today, kind of like what they usually do to South Dakota State when these two teams match up. And right now, South Dakota State's got more yards rushing than the Bison. It goes out in motion again. Second and eight, they hand it off to Crockett. He tries to leap over the pile. He gets met by a couple of defenders. Bobbitt had the first hit. Sulek there as well. And the South Dakota State defense, the front seven, really containing the run. Well, here they're trying to run the power, but they're running it back to the weak side. You know, their bread and butter is to the strong side, to the tight end side. They're running it back to the open end. So right now, you know, just watching film, it's a little bit different than what they usually are. And maybe I, I you know, I only watched four games, but I studied it pretty hard, and uh, it doesn't really look characteristic of what they usually do from a game plan standpoint. They need seven on third down. Wentz takes it to the check down man. It's Crockett trying to get that first, and Crockett to the 30. He gets to the 31, and he does have the first down good job by Crockett very good play by Crockett you know making that one man miss to get the first down that's a critical first down right here you see this little jitter step the pass protection has been great all day watch right here he makes the first guy miss boom gets that extra yard it's Lolly who overcommitted up because of that move by Crockett yeah Crockett's coming to the sideline he's rolling his hand like let's keep it going let's get going King Frazier in at running back Give it to Frazier. His second carry of the day. J.R. Plody wrapped him up. A couple of yards for Frazier. It'll be second down and eight. But this is the kind of patience that the Bison want to see from their offense sticking to their game plan. Yeah, well, right there, though, you can see that Frazier's going up into the line of scrimmage. King's up going up the line of scrimmages. He's got to hesitate his feet. What that means, whenever a back's feet start to hiccup or stutter, that means the line of scrimmage is flat and the gaps are being taken by the defense. Run it with the quarterback on second and eight. Went spinning across the 35. Nice job by TJ Lally hanging on the backside for the quarterback. Keep off that. It'll be third and five. Lally, a team captain. Very good play there. Very good patience. Staying inside out on the quarterback. And 20 tackles the last time these two teams met. Lally establishing a new career high in tackles this year as a junior. Now third down and five. What kind of look do you expect to see from the buys? Well, they're in a nickel look. I, I expect them to be in two high safeties. I don't think they'll play man here, and that's what they look like they're going to. It looks like it's a two high look, playing cover two. Now whether they're going to play, nah, they're rolling it down now, so more of a cover three look. Cover Wentz man. to the middle, and it's the tight end. Bodwin with his second catch, a gain of seven, and they move the chains, dinking and dunking their way down the field. Now they gave him a look of. They gave him a good look of too high to start with, rolled it down into man coverage. Just hooking it up inside. Number three receiver hooks it up. On the sticks, first down. They're trying to disguise their coverage with a too high look and get into a man look late, trying to confuse the quarterback, but he hits the inside receiver on the three-man side for the hookup on the sticks. Bison have never lost a playoff game in this building. A battle back, trailing for the first time. Wentz off play action, and it's intercepted. We got a flag, though. We got a flag down here. It might be on South Dakota State for holding. Melvin Tavares with the interception. We'll see what the penalty is. You might have got a hold down here. Looks like it is. Pass interference. Defense. 
Number 33. Right. Spot foul. Automatic first down. It's on Lolly, and it saves North Dakota State for the moment. Yes. Well, that was the first play action of the game. Real play action pass from from quarterback behind center. And they, they got Lolly for holding there. Right there. Grabbing the right shoulder as the ball was in the air. Tavares diving in for that pick after the deflection, but the interference keeps the ball with the Bison. Their run of three straight FCS championships, trying to begin their fourth title run this year. This was, is their opening playoff game. They had a first round bye. I was reading something in one of their press releases. This is the first time they've run worn green in the playoffs also. Undefeated in their gold jerseys, but went to green today. And uh, I'm not superstitious, but yeah, you are. That's a first time. <laughs> King Frazier gets a couple of yards there. You're not superstitious, but <laughs> but, the, but the gold jerseys. But the gold on. jersey, you've got to bring them back. Frazier, redshirt freshman at Nebraska last year. Now in the sophomore season, at 106 yards against South Dakota earlier this season, 45 and a touchdown. A couple of weeks ago against Youngstown State. Kellen Sulek is down. So they'll take a look at him. North Dakota State trying to move the ball down three at home. Second round in this FCS championship. South Dakota State has the lead, 17-14. The North Dakota State looking for the upset. We saw one today, number three. Jacksonville State goes down at home, 37-26 to Sam Houston State. And Liberty. Trying to pull an upset over Villanova. Coastal Carolina has advanced to 7 seed. They will play the winner of this game next week. In the quarterfinals on December 12th and 13th across the ESPN networks. Bison ball after an injury timeout, second and eight. In the Jackrabbit territory. Carson Wentz hands it off to John Crockett, trying to turn the corner. Crockett has room along the sideline, cut back inside the 30, down to the 28, first down. Now that's what they, they, that's the lead G play. That's the first time I've seen it today, and that's one of their bread and butter plays. You can see right there the guard pulling out the fullback, leading center, sealing back on the inside linebacker. That's the first time I've seen lead G today. This is Bison football right here. Power. Lee G, Bob, which is back on backer, lead those type of plays. Andrew Jack Rabbit again. This time at the 23 yard line. Looks like it could be Melvin Tavares, who had an interception called back because of a pass interference call earlier on this drive. We've seen penalties on both sides keep drives alive today. Melvin Tavares is a backup, but leads the team with three interceptions. And he had one here, but it got called back, like you said, because of Tally's holding on that angle route to Crockett. But, you know, that's the first time I've seen the lead G. I see lead G a lot on film. What I mean by lead G is the fullbacks leading on the pulse, play side backer, offensive guards pulling on support, and the backside centers pulling to seal the inside. And uh, they, they executed it very well for a big game. North Dakota State, 14 0 at one point in this game. Jack Rabbits have. Rattled off 17 straight points. The Bison threatening here, though. Finally inside the 30-yard line. Inside of two minutes to go in this third quarter. North Dakota State trying to move on to the quarterfinals. Trying to defend their title. Three in a row. The Bison have won. They are right at the mark for field goal. 33-yard line is right where they need to be. Play action. Wentz trying to get out of trouble. Throws it down the sideline. And a great catch, but he was knocked out of bounds. In a big way, like Kerry Woods made the catch. Actually, looks like Vra, who made the grab and then was chopped down from behind, fell right on his back. Hopefully, he's okay. That was a big hit. Now, that's a big time throw. Off balance throw by the quarterback. Accurate. Wow. Big hit back there. It's a great play by Gentili to knock Vra out of bounds. A clean play. Making sure that Vra didn't come down inbounds with that catch, but Vra was suspended in the air, falling straight down on his back. How about that throw, though? I mean, he's up in the air, and that guy has got a big time arm on him. We'll be right back. 
Eight for South Dakota State, 17 14 over the Bison. Good to see Zach Bra up and at least with some help off the field. Bra, one of the best receivers in Bison history. He's a guy who's overcome three broken collarbones. In fact, both of his collarbones have been reconstructed. They're both made out of metal at this point. And Bra, despite all that, still with the great numbers, as you can see, and able to move off the field here. North Dakota State ball after the injury, second and ten. The way the safety's rolling, this play might be going left. It's Crockett up the middle, yep. and he shakes it to the 25. Got about three. Right now, it's a 42-yard field goal, third down. Certainly in the distance for Adam Keller, who is seven of eight between 40 and 49 yards this season. He's even hit a 50-yarder, so certainly within his range. He's down working in the net right now. Big third down. Keller just a sophomore but he has had the two best kicking seasons in school history in his first two years in Fargo South Dakota State's playing nickel I think they're gonna run the football here third down it's play action Wentz rolling away from Sherlock who almost had him now Wentz looks to throw and it's Gephardt who cannot hang on to it incomplete nice hit by Freeman Simmons from behind to jar that one loose. What great pursuit. Great pursuit by the Jackrabbit defense. Watch here. Play action. Bootleg. 36. Jack Sherlock. Great effort there. Just holds him up enough. Throwing that ball. That, that's a catchable ball, though. Once again, catchable ball. 42-yard field goal attempt. This is to tie this thing up. He's definitely capable of it. Adam Keller, 23 of 27 this year. Again, 7 of 8 between 40 and 49. And Keller knocks this one through to tie the game. 42-yard field goal from Adam Keller. Woo, we got a game, baby. We certainly Woo. do. Late in this third quarter, and it's all even. 17-17. Seven, Six-minute drive there by the Bison coach. Wow, well, that's... That's what they need to do, but they, they, they need touchdowns. You know, they talk about it all the time. When you're a ball control football team, settling for threes is not what you want to do. When you're driving balls, you got to score. That's a win for South Dakota State, just like it was a win earlier for North Dakota State, forcing field goals. The next team to score got a chance to win this football game. Winner will go to the quarterfinals next week against Coastal Carolina. It'll be a home game for the Bison if they advance a road game for South Dakota State if they advance. Trading field goals in this third quarter. And keeping this an even score. You know, talking to Coach Stiegelmeyer on the phone the other day also, you know, they, they, they won the trophy again for the, the top academic team in the league. He takes great pride in that. Trevor Wesley wow. cut down. Great Good tackle play. in the open field. As Wesley got hit at the 80 yard line, it was Zach Colvin yeah. who we saw down earlier in the game. First one to come up down. and make that tackle. Yeah, that, that, that's a big play because there was a little crease there. They were running a hash return there, and he, he beat his man on the backside, came in, and what we call trim the fat, meaning he squeezed it down and made the play behind the line of wedge blockers for South Dakota State. This place is going to get loud here, Coach. Yeah, this game, this game is what they come for. It's a 17-17 football game with 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Jack Rabbit ball from their own 21. They run it. Zach Zenner fights his way to the 24, gains three. It'll be second and seven. That could be the last play of this third quarter. These teams are very similar in some of the plays they run right there. There's that power roll play like I talked about earlier. Down block on the play side. Pull the backside guard. Fullback kicks out. Great fill. These two teams see these plays a lot. This is a battle of wills right now and a battle of who's the toughest in the trenches. Both of these teams have shown great resiliency. South Dakota State down 14 nothing at one point coming back to take the lead. The Bison have retied it and we head to the fourth quarter in this second round matchup in Fargo tied at 17. 
Fourth quarter begins the Fargo Dome. Second round in this FCS championship, 17-17. Coach Deadlock through three. As we take a look at the other side of the bracket, New Hampshire advancing the number one seed. Moves to the quarterfinals. They'll face Chattanooga next week. Illinois State is advanced, waiting for the Eastern Washington Montana winner. Winner of this game faces Coastal Carolina. And on second down, the Jackrabbits don't go anywhere as Kyle Emanuel, we haven't said his name much today, no. but he takes his center down there. Well, they went to the well one too many times. That was that sprint cutback draw, and that time Kyle was waiting for it. He wasn't closing down. He was boxing from the outside and holding for it. He has seen that formation twice, been burned. They've obviously covered it on the sideline. More than 100 decibels here in the Fargo Dome. And it's third down coming up for South Dakota State. Here comes the blitz. Sumner tosses it out to the side. Schneider makes the catch for a first down. Uh, that's Schneider going up over the redshirt freshman. Trey Dempsey once again like a back shoulder stop route. Back shoulder fade. The blitz was coming man to man. Perfectly thrown ball. Big play by Austin Sumner. He stepped up on that one. That was a critical play. Perfectly thrown once again the size six foot five of Jason Snyder over the freshman Big play South Dakota State that was a worrisome thing for him the size of the South Dakota State wide receivers Very tall six four and six five receivers Back to Zenner in the middle of the field across the 45 Sumner now coach has completed his last seven passes after a four for ten start and we talked about that earlier it was time for him to step up he was the difference in the game at that time wasn't playing a really good game but he has stepped up here like you said he's coming off the field here though looks like they'll go back to the wildcat which they ran quite a bit in the second quarter leading to their 14 points before half it'll be interesting to see North Dakota State had all halftime to adjust to this formation. Center keeps it. And swallowed up in the middle. Got a yard or two. It'll be third down and about six. Well, you know, this was a new wrinkle for him. The Bison might have been a little bit surprised by it earlier in the game, but right there, they snuffed it out. It's Nickel on the field. Nickel's coming in. It's a big third down. We got third down at six. In comes the quarterback, Austin Sumner. These two Missouri Valley Football Conference rivals matching up in the playoffs for the second time ever. It's been a battle so far. Okay, they're emptying it out. It's man across the board, two deep man. Sumner trying to throw it on the run behind Wesley. Wesley was open, would have been a first down. Instead, Sumner with the pressure coming. Made a quick decision, and they'll have to punt. Wesley's wide open. Number five, champion, loses his man. They're playing straight man coverage. Number five, champion, he's not even in the picture. You'll see him come in late right there, and you'll see the safety talking to him. Where were you? So he was wide open. Champion didn't stick with his man. Had a chance for a big play. They couldn't connect. Ethan Sawyer will punt for South Dakota State. Now, we've had some line drive punts here. Now that one's got a little bit better hang time, but this is no, nope, he's gonna fair catch it. Taylor Rice makes the fair catch at the 13. And North Dakota State with a chance to reclaim the lead. Trying to get to the championship again. All tied up at 17 early in the fourth quarter, 12-18 remaining on the clock. Second round in this FCS championship in the 2014 NCAA. Division One football championship continues next weekend. Quarterfinal games on December 12th and 13th. All games will be on the Watch ESPN app and ESPN3.com. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Bison backed up. They have the ball from their own 13. They'll run it on first down. Give it to John Crockett, who's been much better in the second half. Bottled up there, though, at the 15. Bunch of defenders, including Austin LeBlanc. You know, early in the game, 
if you go back and you think about it, North Dakota State was running the ball pretty well with their two back power lead plays. And since then, South Dakota State has really stepped up in the defensive front. And, and that that one of those top players for him in there is number 94, Kellen Sulek, who went out of the game earlier. Just a freshman is really playing tough at the point of attack out there. Second down and eight, pressure coming. Wentz holds up in the pocket, finds his man, the tight end, Andy Baldwin, at the 27. Dallas Brown with the tackle. Nick Mears was there, too, but a first down. Good protection on the play, and I'll tell you what, the umpire was almost a factor in this play. Watch the umpire here. Oh, right over the top of his head. Umpire was involved in two plays in the first couple of minutes in this game. Fortunately, yeah. he stayed out of the way mostly since then. He was trying to get active there. North Dakota State trying to keep their championship hopes alive. They've won three straight FCS titles. They've never lost a home playoff game in this building. They haven't lost one period since 1991. Play action. Cat. Wentz Corner going cat. deep. Top, Herzendowski top. makes the catch. First down, North Dakota State. That's a second big play by the freshman Herzendowski. Only 20 receptions on the year and two huge plays today. He was up against a linebacker there. It was Hassel who was covering him. And, and if you notice, over to the side, corner blitz picked up by Crockett. Crockett coming all the way across the formation to pick up the corner blitz. Nice execution by the North Dakota State offense. Hassel was lucky to catch him there at all, or Erzendowski would have been gone. Erzendowski stepped up to the plate today. Freshman. Wentz keeps it up the middle across the 25. That came off the lead G play. It was like lead G, option keep, linebacker's gone, quarterback's key in the linebacker, bang, he hits it up in there. Watch it here. They got lead G going, sees the seam, linebacker's gone, he's following the play. They, they're key and tally there, or Lally, I'm sorry. Lally goes with the flow of the lead G, he runs up in behind him. Empty backfield on second and two. Wentz rolling away from the pressure. Fires down the sideline, it's low, and it's incomplete. The line judge had a good look at it. It was Kerry Woods trying to make the catch. But now third down. Super slow-mo. Oh, it's close. Although he might have he, been. He's it, out of bounds with the catch, though. Yeah, that, that's what it might have been. He's, I think he caught the ball, but he's out of bounds when he had his possession. His knee is down there. His knee is in bounds. Yeah. they got to review this. You might want to check it. Yeah, that's close. Wayne, you're on top of it, man. <laughs> you should be in the replay box. <laughs> I know you, you've got an argument with the replay official from, from something from 12 years ago, really. Maybe, Bill, yeah, the Wisconsin <laughs> game. We. We lost on a field goal. They didn't make the field goal. They said we were offsides. I never saw it on film. They got to kick it again, won the game. Let's take a look again. Kerry Woods down to his left knee here, right on Where the two yard line. possession made? Ooh, that's going to be close. I don't know if the elbow's down. It's a tough call. The question is, does he have possession as soon as his hands touch the ball? Well, that is no longer in our hands. That's in the replay official. He's got a good look at it. If that ball wobbled at all, then it's an incomplete pass. Are you sure? No wobbling. There's it, no wobbling. If it wobbled, it's incomplete. We'll see. Rolling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. It must have wobbled. It must have wobbled. Yeah. I'll tell you what, these plays are close. Once again, official makes a good call. After 40 years of coaching, it's hard to say it, but I'll tell you, it's not really hard to say it. Officials do a heck of a job. I went to an officiating camp one year for three days, and it was amazing the things I learned that these guys have to do to really be good at their game. Now third down and two, Crockett's the deep back. I'd see power going to the left here right now. That's their bread and butter. Let's see if they run it. There's Crockett, first down to the 22 and more across the 20. Ohio push to the 19 and North Dakota State gets a fresh set. They didn't run power, but they ran lead to the wing side and got a big surge out of their offensive line. Okay, this is just lead, block down lead. Crockett fires a seam and the scrum starts to push. 
Big number 76, Jesse Hines, the center. He's in there pushing. He's the all Missouri Valley Conference center. The only senior in that offensive line. Rockets alone in the backfield now on first down. Red zone chance for North Dakota State. Back to Crockett. Lee G. Away from the first defender, but it was Cole Langer who finally pushed him out of bounds after a couple of yards. It could have been a loss, but Crockett made that first man miss. Okay, when I when I call that a lead G play, a G signifies the play side guard. When I say power O, that's the offside guard pulling. That's the play side guard and the center pulling. The center's peeling back for the linebacker. The guard's playing on the outside. The onside back is leading up into the hole. And they've had some success with that play. Good play by Trey Carr, though, the freshman coming up making the initial hit. Rocking out to 1,500 yards for the season. Go back to him here on second down, and Crockett gets to the 15. Sherlock there for the tackle, so is Hassel. Now third down, you're in field goal range, coach. You take a chance? Well, this is Bison football here right now. This is grind the clock. They will use as much as the clock up as they can. I see the quarterback looking to it now. This is Bison football. I think, I think they're going to keep the clock running. I think they're going to let the quarterback maybe keep the ball here. They might spread them out, look for quarterback draw, quarterback power, maybe some type of sprint out with a run pass option. Trip to the quarterfinals on the line. Winner plays Coastal Carolina next week. Bison in field goal range. Play clock down to five. Yeah, he's using up all the clock. Play action. Wentz has time. Trying to escape. He's Looking for one. somebody to open one. up. Oh, Wentz didn't see there. it. And now trying to keep the play alive. Look at the blocking in front. Wentz taking off. And finally out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. He had all day to let those routes develop. A guy did get open, but Wentz didn't see it. Yeah, I was up here shouting, he's got him, he's got him, but I tell you, that's what that's like being on the sideline again. Wentz is a good football player. He's just a junior. Big man, strong, he's got a strong arm. Used up a lot of clock there. That drive took up some time and the clock still running because it was in bounds. I see, I see they ran it down to three seconds. And let's see if the field goal team runs this clock down. Adam Keller. They're not gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna snap it seven seconds. And Keller hits that one with that kick. Adam Keller not only gives the buys the lead, he becomes the all-time career leader in field goals made at North Dakota State. Just a sophomore. Keller's got two today. The Bison back on top. The NCAA FCS Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. 7.43 remaining in this fourth quarter second round matchup in North Dakota State has just reclaimed the lead 20 to 17 over South Dakota State after a 29 yard field goal by Adam Keller. Angarelli going back deep for the Jackrabbits. Trevor Wesley as well. That was a 10 play drive coach 75 yards made up about four and a half minutes. That's Bison football right there. That's what they needed to get to. Big play by Erzendowski who has stepped up big for him today. True freshman Erzendowski with a big pass play, oh. but that's the second time we've seen the Bison kick the ball out of bounds. That kickoff man, Ben LeCompte, their punter. So a decent field position for the Jackrabbits after another mistake. Those are the kind of plays that drive head coaches crazy. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. 35-yard line. South Dakota State is elected to take the ball first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Mm. In a game where a field goal could tie, you make the field a little bit shorter here for the Jackrabbits, who also have a very good kicker in Justin Sirvanka. Yeah, 15 yards difference in field position. That's huge. Figure only about 35 yards to get in the field goal range from here. Play action. Some there along the sideline. Too far for Winicky, but a flag comes in. Wow. CJ Smith is upset about it. I don't blame him. I, 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 I didn't see any problem with that. It'll be interesting to see the replay. Maybe it was a little elbow or a little grab that we couldn't see from here. We're a long ways up. 
Pass and repairs on the defense. Number six. Automatic first down. Little push there. That's really it. Uh, Not much. I tell you what. Let him play a little football. I, I don't. I don't like that call there at all. That's an uncatchable ball. Also, that ball. That ball isn't even close to being catchable. That had nothing to do with the receiver catching that football. Now the Jackrabbits, after two penalties, are in midfield. Zach Zenner trying to push ahead. It's down to the 47. He gains three. Really, only about 15 yards or so from. A makeable field goal for Sierra Vodka as long this season 46. Probably tack on a few yards being indoors. Get around the 30 to the 35, and they should be able to try a field goal. Yeah, once again, penalties just kill them. They go to nickel here. It's second down. They got nickel on the field. You know, they're going to spread them out. Once again, good time to run the football if the box is right. Six-man box should be a run. Here comes center. He gets across the 40 for a first down to the 39. That also puts Zach Zenner in NCAA history. 2,000 yards rushing for a third consecutive season. You know, that, that's good. That's good offensive football. They get six men in the box. That's another little wrinkle. They spread them out, get six men in the box, call the run. They've got one more gap that the, that the Bison can't fill. South Dakota State, I'll tell you what, they, they've got some wrinkles in this game that have paid off big for them, not only in the run game, the, but, but uh, formationally what they've done. Same thing here. Back to Zenner to the 38, gets about a yard. It'll be second and nine. Another first down, and South Dakota State will definitely be in the field goal range for that man, the senior of Sioux Falls, Justin Sirvatko, who's only missed one time all season. That time the Bison, instead of playing six in the box, shot people off the boundary side, the short side of the field, and crushed that play. That's Zach Center off the field. I don't think he's been off the field all day. Brady Mangarelli and Reggie Gandy, the two backups. I believe he'll be back, though. Sumner to pass on second down, floats it for Schneider, and Schneider can't get it. Incomplete. C.J. Smith again with the coverage. Third down. We've seen Adam Keller make a couple of field goals today. Sirovatka's got one. Both of these kickers, probably the best in school history on both sides. Sirovatka, 76%, is the best in school history. Keller's made more field goals than anyone in Bison history. A little bit out of Sirovatka's range where they are now. Third down from the 38-yard line of the Bison. Center back in. They're in nickel. They're in nickel coverage. It looks like they're playing man to man. They swing it out. Mangarelli has space. Cuts it near the first down He's marker. Stopped. He's short. Down at the 31. He is short. 48 yard field goal from here. Marked at the 31. It'll be fourth down and three. They mark it at the 32. They're actually. going for it. They're going for it. Here they. I don't think this is a field goal attempt. It'll be a 49-yarder. Sumner's coming off the field. Center, it's going to be Wildcat. They're going to put it in the hands of 31. They're going to go with their man right here. You agree with this call? Yeah. You're the visitor. You're on the road. You're going for the upset. Let's go. They'll get another possession. They still got time. It's going to be Zenner across the 30. He gets it. He gets the first down to the 27. Zach Zenner behind the pile, behind the blockers, and a huge first down for the Jackrabbits. Well, that's, that's blood and guts right there. That, that, they put the big guy. They bring a defensive lineman into the game. Zenner just keeps churning his legs. Good push by the offensive line. Number 93, a defensive lineman, comes into the game. Landon Schultz is a lead blocker. They just won the line of scrimmage. Now they're in field goal range. That was a gutsy call, but that's the call you got to go for. When you're the underdog playing on the road, go for it. I love the call. John Stiegelmeyer, as cool as he can be on the sideline. Now Zenner breaking a tackle to the 20 yard line. He gains eight on that first down run. Forget the field goal. South Dakota State with time dwindling in this game. A touchdown would give them the lead. Well, 
They're going to keep grinding this clock right here. This is just a lead play. Once again, no hiccup in the steps of Zach Zenner, and he gets eight yards. They are winning at the line of scrimmage. Zenner's getting to the line of scrimmage without having to stop his feet. That's the difference in this football game. We've talked about it earlier. They are breaking the cup of the Bison defense. 131 yards for Zenner. Sumner to pass. Floats it up to Winicky. Winicky can't get it. Good coverage, but another flag. Boy. The refs have been a big part of this game. Maybe too big. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really involved. I thought that was pretty darn good coverage. I'd like to see that on a replay. But I think C.J. Smith's play, played that pretty well. I thought he played the last one real well when he got called. Pass interference. Defense number three. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. That's number six. He's looking back for that's a I think that's a really good defensive play. I don't see what they're seeing there. Watch him turn. He turned a little late, maybe. He's just as entitled to the ball as the other man once he goes up though. Yeah, and the ball's not even there yet. That's yeah, I don't know. Tough call against the bison. Now first and goal. It's Zach Zenner trying the middle. Still pushing, but Zenner down around the four. It'll be second and goal. And if you're the Jackrabbits, here comes another penalty. penalty. Another flag flying in at the end of the play. Well, the Bison cannot catch a break. They might pick this one up. They're getting a little heated. It's getting a little heated down there. I, the Bison haven't been in this position before, but. You know, valuable time going off the clock. They got to keep their composure here. They can they can make a goal line stand. There's no foul for a personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Second down. That would have made it first and goal inside the two. Instead, it's second and goal inside the four. 3:32 to go. Both teams with other timeouts. A lot of time. But South Dakota State trying to pull off the upset. Looking to go to the quarterfinals for the first time, trying to stop the Bison from a four-peat. Sumner over the middle, touchdown! There was whistles blowing. I don't know what's going on. I heard whistles. Maybe it was in the stands. Jake Winicky, the redshirt huh? freshman, catches his 16th touchdown pass of the season. They go play action, slammed, wide open. That's Jordan Champion, nowhere near in the coverage. Same person that broke down in a two-man situation earlier in the game on a big third down. You cannot get beat inside on the goal line on a slap play. He is nowhere to be seen. Siravatka makes it a four-point game. And South Dakota State, Austin Sumner. His first touchdown pass of the day to the redshirt freshman, Jake Winicky. The Jackrabbits looking for the upset. Second round of the FCS playoffs from the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State, trailing 24-20. 3-18 to go. The Bison have won 20 straight games at home. They've never lost a home playoff game here inside the Fargo Dome. But now they need a touchdown in the final minutes or their streak of 20 straight home wins and three straight FCS championships will be out the window. Well, South Dakota State's going to get challenged here because the tradition of this program is very, very strong. It's been it's been su sustained success since the 60s. Players of the past have been the key. They build a strong bridge, and at this point, right now, this group of Bison have to take control of the destiny of this program and drive it the length of the field and put it in the end zone to win this game. And right now, if I'm thinking about the tradition of the Bison, I'd have to say they've got a great chance of driving this ball. South Dakota State's going to have to come up with their best effort of the day. On the return is Perkins to the 24-yard line. South Dakota State leading. And if they do win, they will advance to the quarterfinals for the first time ever and play at Coastal Carolina next week. Liberty and Villanova in a good one as well, trying to sort that one out, as are these two. 
North Dakota State and South Dakota State trying to move on. Sam Houston State with the upset earlier over Jacksonville State. I'd like to just say before this game is over, these two teams have excellent coaching staffs. Somebody's going to win this game, but both of these teams have a lot to be proud of the way they've played today. Carson Wentz, 175 yards in the air, 66 on the ground, a touchdown on each side. Trying to lead this fourth quarter comeback. And it off on first down. Crockett sneaks through. Still on his feet. Crockett a first down to the 37. Tradition. What a great drive. What a great game this is going to be down the pike here. North Dakota State College Division National Champions three times. Five D2 national titles and three straight FCS championships. Trying to keep their dreams alive for a fourth. Wentz with the pocket collapsing. Flag comes in. Might be a hold. Wentz along the sideline out of bounds. That's usually a hold back there. Holding on the offense, number 70. Ten-yard penalty. Each second. That's the tenth penalty in this game against the Bison. Boy, it's hard to win games with ten penalties. They called it on 70. Yeah, that's kind of a bear hug from behind. Now first down and long. That's Jack Plankers. He's listed as a backup. Right guard, right tackle. Playing right tackle there. On the spin move, you know, he gets he gets the spin move put on him, but, you know, his arms are draped around him, and that's all the guy in the white hat can see. First to 20, kind of takes the run out of him. Wentz cool under pressure finds his man Kerry Woods Woods near the first down marker he's down at the 47 might be a little short it looked like he had the first down went backwards it did look like a gain of almost all 20 it looks like he's just a yard short though, about a half a yard it'll be second down once again very good pass protection Boy. Bison taking a lot of time in the huddle here. Still all three of their timeouts. Oh, they have plenty of time. They need a touchdown. They need one yard here to move the chains. Pump fake by Wentz. Here comes the pressure. He gets rid of it. Good, good play by the quarterback. Third and inches. You know, get rid of the ball. One mistake by the South Dakota State defensive line. Stay on the upfield shoulder and you have a sack. If you've got the contain rush, don't play the inside shoulder. Play the outside shoulder. Wentz was able to spin out of it. South Dakota State trying to pull off the upset, trying to win as a group of seniors. The Jackrabbits have never beaten North Dakota State with any of these players on the field. Boy, this, this, this is just like I thought it was going to be a great football game. There's Coach Stiegelman right there. What a game plan he's had for today. He had his team ready to play. Empty. Could be quarterback run here. It is Wentz up the middle for the first down. He gets to the 50. Clody with the tackle. Lolly as well. Clock and North stops. Dakota State able to move the chains. All three timeouts intact. A minute 38. The Bison need a touchdown. And they will call their first timeout. At midfield. This this one's there's still plenty of time left in this game. They got two timeouts. They got to be smart with their timeouts. But it's not setting up for a field goal. They got to get a touchdown. Winner of this one advances to the quarterfinals. Of course, this is Jimmy V week for cancer research on ESPN. The V Foundation founded by Jim Balvano and ESPN back in 1993. More than $130 million in cancer research grants. All 100% direct cash donations awarded to cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. Boy, that's been a special foundation. ESPN along with Jimmy V. Um, my hat's off to him, boy. That, that is special if we can cure cancer. North Dakota State has won three straight FCS championships. They've done it usually in dominating fashion, rarely tested come the postseason. Well, you got to know it. If, if, if you're the Bison, you're going to get everybody's best shot. They got, they got South Dakota State's best shot today. This thing's not over yet. Play action. Just playing cover two. Tough to throw against cover two. Center's got a crosser. 
Wentz fires it downfield and unable to hang on to it was Trevor Gebhardt. He had it for a moment, but as he tumbled over the ball, it came loose. He had a crosser coming wide open on the back side. South Dakota State's playing a very soft cover two coverage. You know, it's a it's a good defense. You got to be patient. You got to throw the ball underneath. Let people run. They're, they're, they're playing soft here, knowing that they've got the sticks are to their advantage now. 170 rushing yards from the Bison. Still time to run? No, I don't think it's time to run. I think it's time to get some deep crossing routes against this cover two. Second down, Wentz waiting for those routes to develop. Fires there it to is, the middle. Right there. There got it, it is, right there. To the 22 yard line, that first down for the Bison. They run, they run number 16. Erzendowski down the seam, bends it inside on the hash. That's what you got against cover two. You got to either throw the seam or hit him on the cross. They hit the seam right there. Nice shot. Still. Wentz fires again. This time the receiver goes down. Flag. There's a flag, but the umpire is saying the ball was tipped at the line. They might pull this flag. If the ball was tipped, then contact is allowed. There's no foul for defensive pass interference. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. I don't see the ball get tipped. Yeah, it was never, not even close. That ball wasn't tipped. There's no tip. Wow. The umpire, Rob Kinter. Okay. Can they review They're going to review it. They ought to review it. Can you review that? For the review. Yeah, there's no tip. Well, this one has to go in the Bison's favor as we take another look. I don't see any tip unless 36 gets it. No, that's way over 36. Here. That's uh, there's no tip there. That's pass interference. Unless he's Inspector Gadget. There's no Inspector way. Inspector Go Go Gadget. That. Yeah. <laughs> Not even close as the crowd finally sees the replay. It'll be a big break for North Dakota State. We'll see if there is a penalty here that moved the football from the 21 to about a 10 and a half. Now, was it a catchable ball? That's the next thing you got to talk about. Yeah, it looks like it was thrown kind of above and behind. You'd have to be go go gadget to get it. <laughs> Erzendowski was the intended receiver. Erzendowski's a little guy at 5'11. There's no way he was catching that ball. 65 seconds on the clock, two timeouts. A lot of time for North Dakota State. As they try to stay alive, quite a test from their rivals. South Dakota State has come in here trying to advance to the quarterfinals for the first time in school history. Trying to knock off the three-time defending national champions. These are two fine football teams. Well coached. What a battle today. You know, this is my first year doing TV after 40 years of coaching. By far, this is the best game I've been involved with in 13 games. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. They're reviewing to see, A, if the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage like they said it was and B if maybe if it was catchable you know th th this game I've been looking forward to doing this game these are two solid programs these young men are playing their hearts out today both teams coached hard first and goal I think this is if it's, it's if it's a no tip we at might the have the ball review, at the seven yard the ball line is not tipped at the line of scrimmage Whoa, the ball there we go. The seven yard line which is the spot of the foul first and goal North Dakota State that's a great job of coaching by Chris Kleiman. Great job of coaching by the head coach, the head ball coach of the Bison. That's a great call. If the Bison win, they will host Coastal Carolina here at the Fargo Dome next week in the quarterfinals. North Dakota State beat them last year here in Fargo 48 to 14. They obliterated everyone in the playoffs last year. This year, in their first playoff game, they have been tested to the max by South Dakota State. Just win, baby. It doesn't make any difference. You can call it ugly, you can call it whatever you want. Just win, baby. 
I'd rather win ugly than lose. First and goal. You expect to see John Crockett here? Well, they got two timeouts left. It depends on what the box looks like. You know, they're 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 playing. It looks like they're playing their red four. That's what they, they they're playing two high safeties down here is what they usually do. And right now they got a good box to run it, but the safety's creeping down. He's going to blitz. They're probably going to throw it. Play action. Wentz fires. It is juggled oh. and dropped by Kerry Woods in the end zone. Woods seeing a lot of playing time with Zach Braun injured today. And Woods dropped a crucial one. But effort two by Jimmy Forsythe may have gotten a finger on that ball to disrupt Woods. Here's the other thing you got to understand with with one minute if they score here quickly South Dakota State still got all three timeouts. Let's look at the coverage here. Rocket gets spread out wide. And some movement. They were going with the quarterback power right there. Looks like movement on the on the, on the Bison. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's number 11 today against North Dakota State. 11 penalties. Wow. 110 yards lost on those 11 penalties for Chris Kleiman's team. This is his first playoff game as the head coach. Craig Bull won three titles and split to Wyoming. They actually got a little bit more room here. When you get down inside that seven yard line, that field gets awful small. They got a little bit more operating room on. Now the run is pretty much out of the picture. Playing a middle of the field open look, two high safeties. They got help at the bottom. Wentz fires to the back of the end zone. Touchdown! Wow! Wow! What a play! RJ Erzendowski, the true freshman with his second of the game. I'll tell you what, another big time throw. Holy moly. Woo! Man, was that a play. Erzendowski again. He, he, he's my most valuable player in this football game. They are going to review it to make sure that Erzendowski came down with secure possession as he was hit, I believe, by Dallas Brown. If that was the case, once again, Erzendowski with a linebacker covering him. That was a frozen rope on the money. Great protection, frozen roll. Erzendowski goes up the ladder. Yeah, he's in bounds, no problem. Unless, unless he didn't have control of it. I can't tell from that angle, but it, he's got the ball there. Has he got control when he hits the ground out of bounds? Brown kind of smacked him. The ball was loose for a moment, but it looks like he resecured it before he went down. You see the hit from Brown here. The ball's loose, but then he. Hugs it to his chest right there. The call on the field stands. I think that's a touchdown. But now look at the clock. 54 seconds. Three timeouts. Plenty of time to drive down the field to get a field goal. After further review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown is confirmed. RJ Erzendowski, the true freshman with his second today. That, that's my vote for player of the game. That Eight. guy's made some big ones today. Eight plays, 76 yards in crunch time for the Bison. What do we say about tradition? There's something to be said about tradition. Kids know how to win. They took it the length of the field, and I tell you what, that was a special drive. But 54 seconds, three timeouts. Coach Stiegelman's going to have some answers. This thing isn't over yet. Extra point good for Keller. South Dakota State needs just a field goal at a time. They got to get to the 30 yard line. Any, anywhere between the 30 and the 33 yard line is where they got to get. So we might as well, for you viewers at home, put a red line on about the 33 yard line. That's where they got to get. What an effort from the Jackrabbits today trying to pull off this upset against their arch rival. They have done everything they can. To get out of here with a victory, except stop the Bison on that last drive. Eight plays, 76 yards in two minutes, 18 seconds. Carson Wentz, John Crockett, and RJ Erzendowski, the big players on that drive for the Bison. Yeah, Car you know, Carson Wentz, boy. That guy, this is his first year at quarterback here. That guy, to me, 
has the makings of a big time quarterback and maybe even a career after college. He's got a big time arm. He can run and he's got great pocket awareness. Nothing rattles that guy. He is a big strong physical quarterback. He can play in the pocket and he can manufacture on the perimeter. Wesley and Mangarelli back deep. There's Siravatka hoping for a chance. This guy's got to get a kickoff. He can't be kicking it out of bounds in this crucial situation. Tom Barnison actually with the kickoff. It's a different kicker. Almost went out of bounds. Mangarelli caught it before it had a chance to. Mangarelli down at the 20. Zach Colvin, another special teams tackle. So now the Jackrabbits need to go about 50 yards in 48 seconds with all three timeouts. Oh, they can do that. I know Wentz is like a statue in that pocket. Look at him deliver the ball. He puts it where only his guy can get it. And I'll tell you, Erzadowski goes up the ladder for that one. This place is alive right now. Playing too deep, too deep man. Sumner to throw in trouble, but nothing will happen. The play was blown dead. False start. Right, got a snap, full start on the offense. Number 71. Five yard penalty, still first down. You know it's going to get loud. How do you plan against them? Well, I mean, you, they know it's going to get loud. They practice against noise all week. You know, you, you just got to make plays here. They know they're going to see some form of two deep man or some kind of blitz man. Right there, they open it with two man. I believe they'll stay in their two man coverage and just say, our cover guys are better than your receivers. They're going to get some help over the top over here on Winnicky, and that's where they need the help. South Dakota State still with all three of their timeouts. They're going to reset the game clock to 54 seconds. Right now, it's interesting. The back, it looks like the back is set to the right. I believe the offensive line will be sliding to number 53. Whistle is coming in again. They want to make sure that game clock has been reset. 54 seconds left yes. in this game. 54. Trip to the quarterfinals on the line. North Dakota State trying to keep their hopes of a fourth consecutive national championship alive. John Stiegelmeyer. The clock will be set to 48 seconds. 48 seconds, please. Well, they'll oh, keep yeah, it at from 48. The return. From the return, yes. John Stiegelmeyer trying to lead his team to a 10th win, which will be a school record, or a quarterfinal appearance for the first time. Okay, let's look, let's look what we got here. It looks like they're trying to match it up too high. Man coverage underneath. Sliding the line to Emmanuel. Interception! This game's over. Trey Dempsey with the pick for North Dakota State. Trey Dempsey, a red shirt freshman, nickelback coming into play corner. Big play. North Dakota State wins. They slid the line to Emmanuel. Just undercuts the route, knowing he's got help on top. He's got safety over the top. He undercuts the route. Big interception. It's the first turnover of this game. Yeah, what a football game. I, I tell you what, these two teams played their hearts out. It's hard to see anybody go home with a loss. But, hey, the tradition of the Bison holds up once again here in Fargo. Still three timeouts for South Dakota State. Stop the clock here after each play. Rocket. It's about four. First down would seal it for sure. As the Jackrabbits call a timeout. 38 seconds left. John Stiegelmeyer's crew gave it a go today against the defending three time national champions. That big drive near the end. North Dakota State going 76 yards for a score. Now the next possession, South Dakota State turns it over. 
Austin Sumner throwing just his fifth interception of the season. I'd, I'd like to give a shout out to their defensive coordinator, Clint Brown. What a plan he had today. He held the he held the Bison to 174 yards rushing, but a lot of that was the quarterback. They they stopped. They stopped the main part of that offense, the power play, the lead G. And uh, they, they came in here with a plan to execute, and they executed very, very well, but not enough to beat the Bison here in Fargo. Power. Second down, Crockett. Power. Bang. Across the 20, down to the 18. It'll be third and three. If North Dakota State hangs on, they'll be in the quarterfinals for the fifth consecutive season. They'll host. Coastal Carolina here next week at the Fargo Dome. They'll be able to stop the clock one more time, but it's third and two. If the Bison get a first down here, this game is over. One timeout left for South Dakota State, so if they do stop the Bison, they'll be able to stop the clock, a field goal, and then we'll. Then they have to get seven with no timeouts and probably around 28 seconds. New Hampshire, Chattanooga already in the quarterfinals. They'll play each other next week. The Redbirds from Illinois State advance. Likely will have to make a trip to Spokane. We'll play on the red turf against Eastern Washington. The red turf. North Dakota State needs a first down to seal the win. He'll run power to the right. That's them. Crockett. First down. He's close. First down. Right at the 15 yard line. And they do call it a first down, and that will do it. That's it, man. That's it. North Dakota State. Chris Kleiman's first game as a head coach of the postseason. Wasn't easy. It's a win, baby. Just win, baby. That's the name of the game. Survival. What a football game. My hat's off to that South Dakota State team. And also, these two football teams played their hearts out today. And the tradition of the Bison lives on to move on. To their fifth consecutive quarterfinals appearance, North Dakota State, the defending three-time national champions against their old rivals from South Dakota State, the Bison, pull off the comeback win. 27-24. Zach Zenner made it over 2,000 yards for the season. Fell just 11 shy of the FCS record, but it's the Bison who move on. And coach next week they face Coastal Carolina. What a football game! I don't know anything about what Coastal Carolina is, but if they got to come in here to the Fargo Dome, they better bring their A-plus game if they think they're going to beat the Bison. A great one here today in Fargo, North Dakota State. Trying to become just the second NCAA team at any level to win four straight national championships, joining Augustana, who won in the mid 80s at the D3 level four straight years. Bison now getting three more wins to hoist that fourth consecutive championship trophy. How about how about Zach Zenner? Zach Zenner, everybody was talking about he's never done it against North Dakota State, but today, boy, did he play with heart and determination. Quite a ball game here today in Fargo for Pat Hill. I'm Wayne Randazzo. We say so long from the Fargo Dome. The final score, North Dakota State 27, South Dakota State 24. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Hey, Wayne, what a game.